is Carter Lewis. Check that. Hillman in the left tackle spot, 75. Jason Lewis will be inside of him at guard. We'll set the rest of that offensive line after this play. Brennan Zerbrug, he's going to fire it out into the flat. A little swing pass out to his running back, Caden Davis. He's going to pick up another first down for the offense. And, Jim, right now the Aviators are rolling downhill. They look like a well-oiled piece of machinery right now. T.J. Zerbrug doing a great job of just taking what they're giving you, doing a nice job mixing up the play call, getting on the edge with quick screens, then dropping back and pushing the ball down the field a little bit. When you got a guy like Zerb, who's a th who's, this will be his third year as a letter winner, with that kind of experience, you give him more rope and let him control the game, and he's doing an outstanding job this first drive. First and 10 from the 22-yard line, 11.02 on the clock. Lions Aviators inside the red zone now, down to the 19-yard line. It'll be tackled at the 18. We'll set this offense for you, and we're going to reset that defense after this play. We got doubles on the depth chart. So we gave you actually some of those aviators on the defense. Left tackle, Malachi Thomas Allen. Left guard, Aiden Mosden. Centers, Kevin Frazier. Right guard, Jason Lewis. And right tackle, Carter Lewis. You mentioned your quarterback, Zerbrug. Those receivers, Tyam Miles, Carter Baguera, Ramir Hawkins, and Kayvon Davis. So as Caden Davis fakes the handoff, Zerbrug fakes it to him. He fires it out down to the 15-yard line. It'll be complete to his receiver, number 14, Carter Baguera. Going to get a late flag come in, partner. Got a legal man downfield. Lake doing a nice job, TJ, of keeping everything in front of him. It's so hard to be consistent and move the ball down the field, throwing it like they do on 10, 12 play drives. Doing a nice job early of mixing up their coverages, going to a cover four look and a cover two look where the corners are sitting outside in the flats. Then they'll go one high safety and play cover three where you saw Zerbrook pound the ball in the flat a few, few plays ago on the hitch route. But they're doing a nice job of making Alliance gain every yard. Zerbrug, second and 12 from his own. Check that from the Lake 24, 10.02 on the clock. Scoreless ball game, still the first possession of the game here for the Alliance Aviators. Caden Davis, he shifts from left to right side. Zerbrug in the shotgun, twins left, twins right. He's looking over to the left, pump fakes. He's going to feel the pressure, and he's going to be brought down in the backfield. Sack back at the 30-yard line. The late blue streaks get to him. And in there first, the big fellow, the fire plug, number 56. Big sack for Jackson Conley. Rest of that defensive line wrapped around him, Jack Fuller and William Feaser. Your linebackers, Charlie Christopher. Ooh, remember that name. Matt yes, Christopher's young son. Joshua Sedmock, Dylan Schneider, Evan Brady, and William Butler's out there as well. As they have put now Brendan Zerbrug and the Aviators into a third and 17 from the Blue Streak 29 yard line. Roll out right, pass into Miles. He's going to make a move. Gets it down inside the 25 to the 23. That was Ramir Hawkins on the catch. Zerber doing a nice job of rolling out to his right, getting down hills, had a little flat route, dropped the ball down quickly, let the running back get the kind of yards that he can to make this a, a, a much closer field goal. I love the fact that they're, they're thinking about the three points and not how we're going to get 25 yards. They get it right into that sweet spot. It's going to be about a 39-yard field goal, so a good decision by Zerberg to get it out quick, give him an opportunity to put some points on this board in the opening drive. And speaking of that, it will be Zerbrug with the attempt on the field goal. So a 40-yard attempt, and it'll be no good as he pushes it left as it barely gets out of the back of the end zone. So the Lake Blue Streaks, after getting drove on there on that first series, they bow up Jim at the 23-yard line just outside of the red zone. Alliance seemed to have it all moving downfield. They had... Something special with that hookup with Brendan Zerbra, came on Davis. He kind of spread it around a little bit. Lake Blue Streaks come up big there. It's the penalty that killed the drive, TJ. The, the, the penalty of a legal man downfield set him back a little bit and forced him to put the ball in the air. Lake blitzed and was able to get to Zerbrug to make it third and forever. Great job by the defense. You're going to see Cale Jarvis make the start instead of Will Butler. Cale Jarvis, he'll send his receiver into motion, fakes it to him. 
before the ball is blown dead. He was faking to Nathan Baker going in motion. We're told, TJ, that one of the biggest offenses weapons for Lake tonight, Ty Miller, the outstanding speedy wide receiver, is out for tonight's ball game. Your Leatherneck MC injury update. 8.23 on the clock. First and 15 now. As they give it to Baker, he goes over right tackle. He makes a hurdle at the 20-yard line. Still going, making moves. He shifts back all the way to the 25. And picks up one of those electrifying five-yard gains. Made about three people miss there, Jim. It looked like Nathan Baker was going to be able to score it free, but the Alliance Aviators bobbled him up back over at the right hash. I'll tell you what, Baker with the Madden 23 drop today, TJ, looking like a 99 with that jet sweep run from left to right. Made up for that penalty on first down to put Lake into a pretty good position at second and five. Landon Garter, Nathan Baker, they're going to go left, and they're looking up deep to the right. And they're going to wave that pass incomplete, trying to fit it in to number 24, Dylan Schneider. Third and five coming up for the Blue Streaks from their own 25-yard line. One-on-one -on -one matchup. Alliance decided to roll up the corner into the boundary. Cale Jarvis had time. Offensive line do a great job. It was just a fade route down the boundary. Jarvis just underthrew it a little bit, allowed the DB to get back, make up for it, and knock the ball away. Had him beat by about three or four steps. Looked like Lake could have capitalized for a touchdown on that play if he just got it out a little bit further. Big tackles for the Lake Blue Streaks. Jack McAvenue manning the right tackle spot, six foot three, fifteen, six five, two seventy. Anthony Miller is your left tackle. Motion for the Blue Streaks. Jarvis, he's going to roll to his left. He's going to fire it out to his receiver, number twenty-one. Complete for a first down out to the thirty-three yard line. Landon Gardner on the reception. Fresh set of downs coming up for the Blue Streaks. Coach DeGeorge decided to sprint. Jarvis out to his left, ran the smash concept, ran a pivot on the outside, break in six yards and then back out. The corner dropped out to read number two inside, which was a slot run in the corner out. Jarvis made a good throw for a first down, but he should have got it to him a lot quicker, and that's what you saw Coach DeGeorge whisper to him as he was giving him the next play. Baker, Schneider go wide right, single receiver to the left. Jarvis working out of the middle of the field. He gives it to Solberger. First carry we've seen from that big-time rushing weapon. Jim, we got a chance to see firsthand the things he was able to do last year. We know one thing. He is a weight room monster. Saw him pushing around pretty much the entire weight room, the entire offseason. We're talking about a guy, TJ, in high school with making a 1,000-pound club. That's a 1,000 pounds with the bench, the squat, and the deadlift. Lining up in the backfield, coming downhill at you. Plays a little linebacker, too. Solberger, one of the best tailbacks coming back in Stark County. Baker, Schneider, right. Gardner, left. Solberger gets the handoff off the right hip. He's bottled up in the backfield by that Alliance Aviator defense. We read that in error earlier, so we will give it to you again. Lucius Rouser, Aiden Mosden, Carter Lewis across that defensive line. Those were the first guys penetrating. You see Carter Lewis is going to check out along with number 32, Onez Roseboro. Alliance going with that three-man defensive front. They'll come down with the rush linebacker number 24 Jackson Cooper watch out for that senior coming off the left side of the offensive line trips right single receiver left as Jarvis is going to pitch it out to the right and it is snuffed out by number 31 Adam Zumbar nothing cooking there is a fourth down now coming up for the blue streaks Jim you see not really uh nothing going over there to the right side not really fooling anybody was Dan DeGeorge with just a quick little pitch out to Nathan Baker. Well, what Alliance did, TJ, was they might have fooled him with the coverage. They lined up and cover zero, which means the free safety came out of the middle of the field. The linebacker that was over top, the, the slot receiver, ended up coming up to the outside, forcing the, the running back to turn it back inside of the middle linebacker, all-out blitz, and Lake just didn't have an answer for it. Too many guys in the box to block. Five minutes on the clock here in the first quarter. It's rolling, scoreless ball game between the Lake Blue Streaks and the Alliance Aviators. Ball is loose. And it'll be fielded at the 25-yard line off the foot of the Lake Blue Streaks. And the snipers coming down as you see some flags come flying out over on the Alliance Aviators sideline. The ball will be spotted initially here at the 26-yard line. We have an insane glare coming in through this press box, Dom Capers' press box. Uh, we'll give it maybe 
Uh, another 30 minutes, partner, and it should go away. But right now, we are fully cooked up here. I am fully soaked. <laughs> and we are right on top of each other, buddy. <laughs> so we, uh, we're we going to step downstairs and talk to our buddy Mark Milano. How are you feeling down there, partner? What's going on down the sidelines? I think you guys are just listening up in a press box right now. Hey, but this call is going to go against the Aviators right now. And as well as that Alliance secondary is maybe one of the best in the county. All three of those defensive backs, this is their third year as starters. They lost one of their starting linebackers, Nino Hill. He transferred to McKinley. They were without him tonight. It's going to be interesting to see how he works into that McKinley defense. But right now, that defense has definitely been affected by not having him in that linebacker position. Well, as Mark mentioned down there on the sidelines, this isn't the only show going on in the state of Ohio, partner. Opening weekend of Ohio high school football. We got to see two games last night. We saw the Perry Panthers 51, Central Catholic 28. A uh, big win for Coach Zach Slates in his second year coaching. We got a chance to see A.J. Sarball roll down to Sandy Valley, get a 31 nothing victory for his Fairless Falcons, looking to get another piece of that Pac-7 championship. We'll talk more football around the state here after this play. Zerbrug, he's going to keep it over the left side, 15-20, out to the 25. Again, in his second series of the ball game. On the first play of said series, picks up a first down with his feet, moves it out now to the 25-yard line. Under five to go here in the first quarter. Scoreless ball game. You're listening to TJ Downing, Jim Ballard, Mark Milano, Stark Media Team crew on site here inside of Kara Stadium. Scorching up here in Dom Capers' press box, but we like it that way. Football should be like that early in the season. We're starting a week earlier this year, if you're wondering why. You've got six weeks of Ohio high school football playoffs this year. First and 10, twins right, single receiver left, and there goes Zerbrock. Firing across the middle of the 45-yard line out to the 47. Big reception by his receiver, Carter Bergera. Zerbuck doing a great job of seeing the one high safety, which means it's either going to be cover three or cover one. Bottom line, Tej, as the seams are wide open. Zerbuck dropped back, shortened his drop up. Once he got outside the outside linebacker coming up the left seam, dropped a little uh, level two throw over the backer before the safety could get over top. You can see why with touch like that, TJ, D1 scouts are salivating over this kid. Operating from the left hash, handoff, big tailback going over left guard. As I believe that was, yeah, apologize on the glare. Yep. That was Caden Davis. Caden Davis looking to become one of the premier tailbacks in all of the area. Right across on the other sideline, Matt Solberger. Matthew Solberger, he's already kind of put his name into the mix just off his performance last season. New year, fresh start. Opening weekend of Ohio High School football, second and eight from the 48 for the Alliance Aviators. They're across midfield, and there goes Hawkins creeping all the way down inside the 30 of the Lake Blue Streaks. He'll make it to the 27 before he's brought down, and another fresh set of downs. Alliance working their screen game extremely well. They're running bubble screens. They're running tag screens to the outside. They're play actioning. They're pushing the ball down the seams. What a great game plan coming out to keep this Lake Blue Streak defense off balance and on their heels. Hawkins now going to go slot right. Two receivers outside of him. Single receiver left. Zerbra going from his left hash. Going left to right on your radio dial. Caden Davis on his left hip. Zerbrug, he's looking over Coach Goodman, and Coach Goodman's going to have to burn a timeout. So we'll step aside and take a break. You're listening to Ohio High School Football Opening Weekend right here with the Stark Media Team on 99.7 FM and the free iHeartRadio app. Nobody wants to imagine the heartbreak of losing a pet, but when the time inevitably comes, Eternal Paws will be there for you. We're here for you in your time of loss. We work directly for you and provide private cremation services. However you choose to remember your loving pet, we have many memorial options. Custom urns and jewelry, clay and ink paw prints, engravings, and more. Eternal Paws Pet Cremation Service. We're here for you when you need to be there for them. 
Chris McCready's and his team at Finally Hear Hearing Aid Center in Canton offer up over 30 years of experience for their customers who are hearing impaired. Head over to their website at finallyhearohio.com and schedule your free hearing aid test and evaluation today. They're a best of the best award-winning company that, that prides themselves on customer service. Stop down and see them at 1201 30th Street Northwest or contact them at 492-1212 for an appointment. And thank you for sponsoring Stark Media's finallyhearohio.com player of the game. Back here in the line, Zerbrug, he takes it over left tackle on first and 10. Again, picks it up with his feet, picks up 11 yards down inside the red zone now to the 16 yard line. 324 on the clock here in the first quarter. Scoreless ball game between the Lake Blue Streaks and the Alliance Aviators. The Aviators knocking on the door now. And Coach Tim Goodman. Happy that he called that timeout. That was the first timeout burned in this ball game. As now he'll be set up first and ten. Receiver left, two receivers right. Davis, he's going to get it. He's going to go over right guard, pick up three yards. Check it, they'll give him four. Down to the 12-yard line. I'll tell you what, TJ, the only, the only people that have stopped Alliance... In this first half on offense as Alliance, it's just been a penalty and a sack that's really buried him. Lake, really on their heels. Coach Goody doing a great job, as I said, of, of mixing in the run with the pass, and you got a quarterback that can get downhill and make every throw, and this offense is rolling right now. Single receiver left, twins right. Zerbrug fires it for his receiver, looking for number 15. Tyon Miles, incomplete. Third and seven coming up with 224 remaining here in the first quarter scoreless ball game we're going to check in on some other ball games around the area as we know sam berkwin and jeff schreiber over there maslin tigers hosting big mo out of cincinnati cincinnati moeller making the trip up here today and we've got some other action going on over in jackson akron east the dragons have come down it's aviators here right now though third and seven quick pass out to the receiver He'll be stopped shy of the first down marker. Line to gain is going to be set at the eight yard line. Check that, the six yard line. They'll make the eight. Fourth and three coming up for the Aviators. Interesting call here, but with the way they've moved the ball, TJ, and after the shank by Zerbrug off his left foot. When have you seen a combo like that? You see a, a quarterback who throws right handed and he kicks left handed. So they're going to opt to let him use his arm or his legs on this fourth down call here. Here we go. Fourth and three from the Blue Streak nine-yard line. Zerbrug, he's going to roll right, and they're going to blow that dead. Illegal motion. Had Davis out in front of him as you hear the Lake Blue Streak faithful. Their crowd has come out. Their student section has come out. Looks like beach volleyball night. They're going to try and hang on to this warm weather as, as long as they can. Number 68 across the defensive line is going to check in. Nathan Sponseller, out comes big number 76, the senior, 315-pound Jack McAvenue. So he'll get a breather. Been a long series. Got a little bit longer on that last penalty here for the Alliance Aviators. They're going to be set up with a fourth and eight now from the Blue Streak 14. Scoreless ball game between the Aviators and the Blue Streaks. Buck 35 on the clock here in the first quarter. It's rolling. Aviators still rolling with it themselves. Sir Brug. Quick screen pass, gets it into Davis. First down, pick up inside the five-yard line. First and goal to go for the Alliance Aviators. Man, do I like the play call, TJ. He went twins to the field. The ball was on the left hash. Zerbrug dropped back, looked to his right. Offensive line did a great job of blocking just long enough and then letting the defensive line come in. Zerbrug with his eyes down the field, then drops back a couple steps, drops the ball down to Davis on a screen to the left. Very well executed and a great play call at one of the biggest downs of this first half so they get inside the five they spot Caden Davis down at the four we're under a minute to go here in the first quarter scoreless ball game aviators they're knocking again hand off to Davis he'll be tracked down off the back side by the blue streaks he'll get back to the line of scrimmage won't lose any as you see big number 79 Anthony Miller check in Mark Milano check in with us down on the sidelines partner what you got your boy I'll tell you it's getting off the physical down here 
what Alliance is doing to Lake is exactly what Lake wanted to do to Alliance. When I talked to Dan Jordan before the game, he said they wanted to possess the ball, have long drives. That's not been the case. Lake's only had one possession so far in this game. And I'll tell you what, Alliance looked very dynamic with the ability to both run and throw the football tonight. Yes, they do. And a lot of that has to do with the talent of Zerbrug and Davis. We'll call it Davis and company. Ball's loose. They're going to say that was incomplete as Zerbrug fired it to the short side of the field. Over to the left, in there, on the breakup for the Blue Streaks. Number 27, Joshua Sedmock, the junior defensive back. So he wasn't biting on it, partner. But when you've got, when you've got big Kayvon Davis over there, 6'3", 205-pound wide receiver, you better sniff that out quick. You get him a full head of steam, and that four yards is nothing for him to pick up. Interesting play call. They went quads or four wide receivers into the boundary, ball inside the left hash, trying to run a, a screen. Just not a lot of room to operate out there, and Lake did a great job of smelling it. Bunched up it left, up. single receiver wide right. Zerbrug, he climbs the pocket. He's going to take off. He's going to try and get it. Goes to the end zone, and he's got it. Aviators with their first touchdown of the season. First touchdown of this ball game. And Zerbrug gets dirty doing it, dives into the end zone, 6-0 Alliance. Love the way he handles the offense. He does a great job of surveying, looking down the field. Did a nice job of sliding just a little bit to his left. TJ fell to crease, went straight up to the middle, broke a tackle, got to his right, got his shoulders down, was able to break a tackle. Great decision by Brennan Zerbrug for the touchdown. Extra point attempt is up, and it is good. With 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter, the Aviators out to a 7-0 lead. Jim, you mentioned Zerbrug and how he handles himself. You know, when he was just a young sophomore last year, and you know what it's like to be a sophomore. You're trying to find your way amongst the team and the seniors and the guys who are varsity lettermen and have experience. Well, you know what? He's garnered a lot of attention from things he did last year because of the athlete that he is and the other sports that he excels at. Nothing will rally your team around you. Nothing will gain you the respect more as a quarterback. When you take that ball back into the field, cut it in, know that you're gonna get smacked at the goal line, but you make sure you get it in. That right there is a respect builder, what Brendan Zerbrug just did. Sure was, and when he was running, TJ, he wasn't running timid and he wasn't running straight up oh, and down. No. Zerbrug's a big kid at over 200 pounds, got those shoulders down saying, hey, we're going to go head-to-head -head at the one-yard line. It's me and you, bro. Whoever's going to come out of this is going to be me. And that's what happened. Got his head down, and what a tremendous read and a, and a great job of sniffing the zone and not being denied. Thought we were going to get a little John Elway helicopter action out there, man. Look, you know, Brendan Zerbrug was feeling himself, had those two defenders sitting there. He went up top, but I'll tell you what, he looks so much bigger than he did last year at 6'4", 180. He looks about 190, 195 out there. He fills out the pads now, man. As a junior, he puts his foot into it. And that's going to go out the back of the end zone. Anything he can't do? So he smokes that one. I'll tell you what. He's also the number two punter in Stark County last year, TJ, <laughs> averaging over 40 yards a punt. So he can punt. He just put the ball in the end zone. We've seen his ability to throw the ball, and we've seen the, his ability to run the ball, too. The only thing we haven't called his name on is defense. And the, to be honest with you, it's, it's almost 7.30. It's about time he probably makes a play on defense, too. There isn't anything that he can't do on a field. What a great kid, great family, as we said. Got the pedigree. Dad was a quarterback, an unbelievable athlete in the area as well. Went on to play at Michigan a little bit after Papa Downing did. And now you're going to see number six, Will Butler, come into the game for Lake. Here we go. Let's see what he's able to do. He hands off to Solberger. Solberger delivers a nasty stiff arm. Gets out across the 25. Past the 30 to the 31, picks up a first down, Jim, after taking contact in the backfield. That, my friend, is what we talked about. That is weight room strength. That stiff arm in the backfield right there, that was violent, and that was max power coming from the squat rack, my friend. I'm telling you, man, we watched him last year. <laughs> Lifted off the ground. His ability to break tackles and the yards after contact is one of the things that's so, much, that's so impressive about Solberger, and you can see it on display there. All right, we're going to step aside and take a break. You're listening to the iHeartMedia radio app and your Stark Media team here in Alliance on 99.7 FM. Alliance up 7-0 at the end of one. 
Chris McCready's and his team at Finally Hear Hearing Aid Center in Canton offer up over 30 years of experience for their customers who are hearing impaired. Head over to their website at finallyhearohio.com and schedule your free hearing aid test and evaluation today. They're a best of the best award-winning company that, that prides themselves on customer service. Stop down and see them at 1201 30th Street Northwest or contact them at 492-1212 for an appointment. And thank you for sponsoring Stark Media's finallyhearohio.com player of the game. Back in Alliance, TJ Downing, Jim Ballard, Mark Milano. Pleasure to be a part of your opening weekend of Ohio high school football right here on the new home for Stark Media, 99.7 FM. Catch us on the free iHeartRadio app. Check out our friends over on the YouTube channel. All you got to do is search us on social media, Stark Media Team. 12 minutes on the clock here to start the second quarter. 7-0 lead for the Aviators. And Will Butler comes in to control the offense. Twins left, single receiver right. He's going to hand off to Solberger. He's going to get around the 30 to the 35, trying to deliver a stiff arm again. This time, those Aviators were ready for it as number 31, Adam Zumbar, pushes him out along with number 56 on the cleanup, Aiden Mosden. You can still tell, though, Jim, the power that comes from number 22 when he gets around that corner. Took three guys to take him down. Look how much bigger he's gotten in his lower <laughs> half since last year, partner. You can see, as we keep talking about, all the time he spent in that weight room, a lot bigger and stronger. Down From below. their own 36, 11.55 on the clock. Solberger gets the fake. Will Butler's going to keep it. Climbs 35, scoots up to the 40, back against the grain to the 45. Picks up a first down with the feet. So Will Butler shows you right there. Flashes of what he's able to do last year from Mogador. Loves to run, Jim. You love the physicalness that number six brings to the offense. He's a guy that you have to stay home at at the backside end or or linebacker teach. He's a guy who, who does a great job of reading it out. He's very smart with his with his ability to make good decisions, not in the pat, just in the pass game, but the run game. And you saw it there where the end crashed. He decided to pull it, gets up the field. He broke a tackle. He's a guy who's, you know, 215, 217 pounds. He's going to fall forward for a couple yards. Nice run to get him going in the game. First and 10 from their 45. Solberger stacked right behind Will Butler. Twins right, single receiver left. Solberger gets the carry. Eludes a defender, runs over another one on his way to a nine-yard pickup down to the Aviator 46. The power run game starting to flex here as the Lake Blue Streaks have gone down 7-0. They come out looking like a different offense here to start the second quarter. The, the difference between Jarvis and, and, and Butler is that Will's just a little bit stronger and he's more athletic, so he poses more of a threat to run than Jarvis does. So you really got to stay disciplined backside when he comes off that fake because, as we've seen, he has the ability to get downhill with it and it, he was an all-state tailback at the at the end of the get, end of the day last year, TJ, and we can see it here. He's on the left hip. He's going to be the lead blocker. Not going to work for Will Butler as he tries to get the first down. He gets the extra push, and I think they're going to wave him forward, Jim. They do as the fake in the mesh point to Matt Solberger was pulled out by Will Butler, and Solberger uses a blocker. He picked up that front side linebacker. Another guy scraped off, Jim. Met Will Butler at the line of scrimmage, but the extra push, the extra effort, you saw they lifted Butler off the ground, but he still kept those legs going to fall forward, pick up a first and 10, down to the Aviator 45-yard line as we go under 10 minutes to remain here in the first half. 7-0 lead for the Alliance Aviators. Coach Tim Goodman likes what he has out here with this Aviator ball club. Coach Dan George. Feels pretty good where his offense is at right now as he hands off to Solberger. Dances in the hole. Doesn't pick up much. They'll give him two as you see number 27 check back into the ball game. Josh Sedmock and number 14, Ethan Hunt for the Blue Streaks check out. Number 54, a little extra beef is going to check in for the Blue Streaks. That's Riley Fumuano. Second and eight coming up, 9.30 on the clock. Lake doing a good job establishing the run with Will Butler. Look for them to start running some RPO stuff, TJ. These linebackers getting awful aggressive. Baker in motion. They'll throw the flag. They'll get a false start on the Lake Blue Streaks. Expect some of these penalties early on in the season, TJ. First game of the year, we saw, you know, we're seeing Alliance made it made a couple uh, mistakes with a – they had a key – 
illegal motion penalty that they were over they overcame to pick up a first down on fourth and eight but it was the penalty in the first drive that really stalled them and you're seeing lake having a couple of these penalties you know when you got two two quarterbacks in there tj it's a different cadence well it might be a little bit for Riley from Milano, he got checked in for one play. I think it went against him, and he was just checked back out by Dan George. So don't screw up my cadence, son. Trips left, single receiver right. Will Butler, he's going to roll to the left, has Solberger as a lead blocker, fires it out to his receiver, makes the 40-yard line, stretches forward for the 39. But they'll stop him shy. They're going to say his knee went down at the 41-yard line of the Aviators. So a third and six coming up now, 840 on the clock. Aviators up 7-0 after that last possession where Brendan Zerbrug was able to stretch into the end zone, take contact, put points on the board, striking first blood in this game. Will Butler, he gets his turn at the controls to start the second quarter over Kale Jarvis. He's got him moving now, but Jamie's got to pick up a third and six here as we'll be under eight minutes to go in the first half after this play he's got twins right twins to the left short side he's gonna run it he's got Solberger he's got a blocker stretching for the first he's got it inside the 35 down to the 33 yard line took contact at the sticks fights through it first down blue streaks nice call by coach to George spread spread alliance out they went a little two by two and flared the back out Butler took a step back like he was looking to his right to throw the ball decides to tuck it down on a quarterback draw did a nice job of reading this block Broke a tackle, fell forward for a big first down for the Blue Streak to keep this drive rolling. Mark Milano checking in with us down there, partner. You can see the physical run over on your side of the field by the young man, Will Butler. Yeah, I'll tell you what, when he's back there, when you have those two quarterbacks, both of these guys can throw the football, so it's not like you're going to have to interchange these guys based upon what you want to do. But with Butler back there, I think he gives a little, little bit more of a running dimension that's in there, a little more of a running threat. And you got to keep wondering, this offensive line starting to pick up some momentum right now. They start to wear down on this Alliance defense. Things could change, but what a difference a year makes. This is a Alliance team that was beaten soundly by Lake last year in the season opener. Handoff on first and 10. Solberger goes over right guard. He'll pick up two yards down to the 31-yard line, bring up a second and eight, seven minutes. Under seven minutes now to go here in the first half. As twins go right, single receiver left. Butler in the shotgun, Solberger on his right hip. He fakes the handoff, fires across the middle, and it's going to be knocked down, almost intercepted, as you saw. Number 18 of the defense jam, Jackson Eady. He was going for it. He thought he had the interception, lays out. But you'll see a third and eight now coming up again. And one thing I guess you uh, find out quickly about your quarterbacks, Jim, Dan DeGeorge. He's going to learn a lot about Will Butler and how he handles third down situations. He handled the previous one well. What do you think here as you have a longer one, not a third and six, but a third and eight? I think you're in four down territory, TJ, and he just has to manage it. If the ball, if it's not there on a pass play right now, he just has to be smart enough to try and check the ball down or get four or five yards. What you don't want to do is take a sack here, which would kill the drive. Just take what the defense gives you because you got at least another play. From the Aviator 31, twins left, twins right. Butler fires it out to his receiver, number 24, picks up the first down inside the red zone to the 18-yard line. Gets the reception on third down, moves the sticks, and the blue streaks under Will Butler inside the red zone for the first time this evening. Rolling downhill now, 6.48 on the clock, trailing 7-0. This Aviator defense has been out here almost half of this second quarter. We'll see if Will Butler can finish him off. Trips right, single receiver to the short side left, Solberger on his right hip. He gets the handoff, climbs up the middle, He'll lead block. Check that Butler gives it to him. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage so he won't lose any. He'll have a second and 10 coming up. Lions going to take a timeout here. I think it's a good timeout. They just got a big stop on first down, which is going to put Lake behind the chains a little bit. Coach Goody thinking, you know what? We just stuffed him on first down. Let's call a timeout and get our group to to regroup a little, get, get some water in him for this big second and third down. Great call by Coach Goody here, huh? Spirit of Stark halftime show coming up at the end of this quarter. We'll get some news. We'll come back here. We'll get you some stats, get you a scoreboard update. We're going to have a special guest joining us up here since we're in Purple Raider Nation. Going to have A.J. Short joining us. Had a lot going on here in the offseason in Alliance. Purple Raiders 
renamed the stadium after Jim's old ball coach, Larry Karras. We're inside of Dom Capers' press box. If the name sh short sounds familiar for you Mount Union fans out there, yes, he is a next gen of Cecil Shorts, the outstanding wide receiver and sometimes quarterback who once played here, who had a very good NFL career for about seven, seven seasons before a tragic knee injury took him out and had to retire. Second and 10, 6.36 on the clock here in the second quarter. 7-0 lead for the Aviators. And the ball's on the ground. And I think the Blue Streak's able to fall on it. It's going to push him back outside of the red zone to the 21. Jim, shovel pass, second and 10. Short amount of field to work with. Aviators not biting. Ball on the carpet. Not good if you're Dan DeGeorge in the Blue Streaks. No. It's the last thing you want to happen on second and 10 is for you to get behind the chains even more. They're trying to run a jet sweep. Ball must have been a little bit slippery. Couldn't tell if he went to pitch it or hand it off, but they're going to say that it was a handoff and a fumble. To me, it looked like he was kind of tossing it forward, which would have been an incomplete pass. Coach George is going to think about this when I like the timeout. Third and 14 coming up. Check in with us down on the field. Partner, what you got, Mark Milano? Well, I'll tell you, I think that, that was a great timeout that they had right there because you can't take these things with you into the locker room at halftime. But you got to give the hats off to this Alliance defense as well as the offense with everything that they're doing out here right now. And I think that you're starting to see a little bit of frustration coming from that Lake sideline. I really felt that they thought that they were going to be able to run the ball a lot more efficiently than what they're doing so far here this evening. But I'll tell you what, third... All right, six minutes remain here in the first half. Appreciate everybody rolling alongside us on 99.7 FM. Canton's new country. Canton's new home for Stark Media. Check Stark Media team out on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Find our guys Drew Serachman and Jeff Tyler over there commentating, calling that jackson Akron East game. All you got to do is launch the YouTube channel, Stark Media Team. And you'll get a live stream of that action over there. Check out our boys Sammy B and Jeff Shreve as the Maslin Tigers are taking on Moeller. We'll get updates here at the Spirit of Stark Halftime Show. Still got six minutes as Will Butler, he's going to fire the screen pass, tries to give the Aviators a little bit of their own medicine at this side of the field. Not working, no partner. Incomplete. Tries to fit it into Solberger. I think if it's a clean pass, he's got an avenue with his speed and size. But all for naught. Incomplete, fourth and 13 from the Aviator 21 coming up. Good play call. They, they ran the jet sweep, which was a fumble on, on second down. They came back and ran a screen off of it. Will just didn't do a good job of really getting up top and throwing off that back foot downhill, threw it a little low. Otherwise, as you said, partner, it looked like they had a couple big fellas out in front to, to get at least 10, 10 yards on that play. Gardner, Miller. Check that Gardner, Sedmock, they go right, fire to the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Blue Streaks. Sedmock breaks free. What a big time throw. Butler eluding the pocket, rolling to his left, TJ, falling to the sideline. He's got a backside cross, turns his shoulder from outside of the left hash, throws a dart 25 yards into the end zone on fourth and 10. What a great play by Butler and a great job by the receiver coming down the stem to make the play in the end zone. Boy, they almost had me fooled. I know our Leathernecks MC injury report told us Ty Miller was out for the game and I flashed past his name as I was on my way down to number 27, Sedmock, sitting in that slot position inside of Gardner. He makes his way all the way back across the end zone as they put six on the board. The extra point is up, and it is good. Kelton Dutton strikes it true. 7-7 ball game here in Alliance. Man, we knew that we were going to get a game coming in here, Jim. I think based off of performances in the scrimmage, Alliance goes over to Jackson. They get pounded on. They play North Canton. Different story. You can see that this was a Tim Goodman team that... Had to figure some things out early in training camp. They got it rolling in the right direction. But then you got the Lake Blue Streaks coming in. This early season battle, opening weekend, kickoff of Ohio High School football. You knew the Blue Streaks were going to come in here with a big O-line. Couple weapons there at the quarterback position. And boy, did they just show it right there. Insert 
Will Butler to start the second quarter, and he just chewed up six minutes and 10 seconds as he drove his team down the field to tie this thing up. Well, our sideline pony, Mark Milano, talk, as he said, talked to Coach DeGeorge before the game, and without Ty Miller on the outside, one of the things he wanted to do was really try and chew up the clock with the run game and, and mix in with the pass, and they were really able to overcome some big-time adversity during that drive, a couple penalties and a fumble and fourth and 13, and man, what a great answer. Dalton lets it rip. Dutton lets it rip. It's going to go out of bounds. Lake got a break there, partner. Just should have stepped away and let that go out, out of bounds about the five-yard line. Decided to field it. A little hot to handle. Had that draw on it, which I'm looking to play Monday at that NFL golf outing. A little right to left, but it was too hot to handle for the kick returner. And ball ended up going out of bounds at the three-yard line. So Zerbro is going to be backed up to start this, this drive. Mark, that ball jumped out of bounds right in front of you there, partner. You can kind of see the special teams error. Not the way you want to start after you just had that scoring drive if you're the Aviators. No, you know what? And that's one of the things that Dan George and I had talked about. Offense, defense, and special teams. You can't have those kind of mistakes. Pin yourself back. They can... Here we go. First and 10 from the four-yard line. 548 on the clock. And there goes Zerbrug. He goes over right side. They'll pick up another first down. So on three consecutive possessions, Brendan Zerbrug on the first play of those possessions has picked up a first down with his feet. So athletic. He does a great job looking like a running back when he decides to take off up the field. No hesitation. Runs like he is a running back, which a lot of quarterbacks aren't that smooth when they run the ball. Number 13 he used to wear 30 years ago was one of those guys and myself, but man, does he look athletic when he turns it on. Hand off Davis. He gets across the 15. Check that. They'll stop him shy. About a foot yard of the 15-yard line, so they'll give him two on the first down carry. Under five to go here in the first half. Spirit of Stark halftime show coming up at the end of this quarter, shout out to all of our partners rolling alongside us here for the 2022 season. C.H. Vallison Associates, Kishman's Fresh Market, Simon Says Promotions, McNeil & Sons Tree Service, Leathernecks Motorcycle Club, finally here, Hearing Aid Center. Talk more about some of those partners here at the half. New venture here with the Stark Media crew. So we thank our friends over at iHeartMedia rolling alongside us as well. Zerbrug fires across the middle, complete to the 40, falls to the 50. Down inside the Blue Streak territory to the 42-yard line. Big reception for number 14, Carter Baguera. Carter Baguera, slot receiver, just like his dad, who once upon a time played safety for Mount Union, Chris Baguera. Bugs, they called him. All-American safety. Son looking awful good in that slot, TJ. Very athletic, just like his pops. Leathernecks injury update, Evan Brady. Junior linebacker, he's going to come off the field. First and 10 from the 47-yard line of the Blue Streaks. Davis going to go to work now. Churning those legs inside the 45, down to the 43. Picks up a hard fault three yards on first down. Ideally for Alliance, TJ, if you can, you want to try and milk this clock under 30 seconds and come away with a touchdown. Lake will get the ball to start the second half, so they're looking to get a stop. And on the flip side of that, try and put one in before half end, get a BOGO to start the second half. But Alliance slowing the tempo down a little bit. You can see him working a little play clock. They have the ability to score quickly, so no need to panic or try and get to the line of scrimmage too quickly. David Baluch has stepped in for Brady as they fire a quick pass out to the right on second and seven and it'll be snuffed out. They're gonna lose a yard, the Aviators do, to set up a third and eight, and they'll go back and spot that at the 46 yard line of the Blue Streaks. 3.07 on the clock here remaining in the first half. 7-7 ball game between the Blue Streaks and the Aviators. Number four, Joseph Garo coming in from his corner position, making a great one-on-one -on -one tackle in space on the bubble screen. Trips left, single receiver right. Trips over to the wide side of the field. Davis, Caden Davis shifts to the right hip of Brendan Zerbrug in the shotgun. He gets it. He sits back. He's eyeing the field. He rolls out to his right, feels the pressure. He's going to be sacked in there. Number 58, Jack Fuller. 
As you see that clock burning down, timeout situation. Aviators have one remaining, Coach Dan DeGeorge, and the Blue Streaks have two. So with fourth and 10 now approaching from the Blue Streak 47-yard line, it looks like Coach Goodman is going to let this clock run down as far as he can. Jim mentioned Zerbrug, top three punter in the area last year. He's going to drop back for the quick kick. Boom, he lets it go. We'll see if he's got the right touch. It's going to be fielded at the 10-yard line. Climb to the 15. There you go. Out to the 20-yard line. Across to the 23 for Dylan Schneider. Buck 54 remaining here now. 7-7 ball game. We'll see if it's going to be Will Butler. I believe it is. It's not. It's going to be Kale Jarvis. So interesting to see the shift there from Coach Dan to George. Ball spotted at the 24-yard line. Two-minute situation here for Cale Jarvis. We'll see how he handles it. Sat out the last series. Will Butler drove down the field, led the offense to a touchdown, fired one into Sedmock. We'll see what Jarvis has. From his right hash, trips left, single receiver right. He's looking to the right. There you go. Pump and go. Looking for 24 over his head. Incomplete, trying to fit it back in to Schneider. It's awful tough to hit a, hit a fade route into the boundary, TJ, especially when it's a single receiver and you got the safety help over the top. It's one-on-one. -on -one, they're playing man with safety over the top. Receiver got jammed to the sidelines a little bit, which makes it awful tough for the receiver to get back on top and save the quarterback any room to drop the ball into. Mark Milano will check in with you before the end of this first half. Buck 50, clock stopped, second and 10 from their own 24 tie ball game seven all here between the alliance aviators and the lake blue streaks trips left single receiver short side right solberger stays in the block they fire a quick pass out to their receiver and there goes baker 40 45 out across the 50 there he goes 40 inside the 35 30 it's a foot race to the 25 inside the 20 to the 19 yard line nathan baker the junior quick change of field for the blue streaks and with a buck 36 remaining here in the first half kale jarvis in the offense they're in business partner great job on the perimeter block and by the wide receivers and a hell of an effort by number two nathan baker Trips catch left up. single receiver right solberger back up he gets the carry he's across the 20 15 full head of steam as he leaps over a defender inside of the 14 yard line Lake trying to score before half. Just got to be smart with the ball down here. Second down and five. Lake got a lot of momentum right now, TJ. And as I said, they do get the ball to start the second half. If they can punch one in and get some momentum going into halftime, it's going to be an awful interesting second half. Buck 21 on the clock. Seven all, Kale Jarvis trips left, fights to get the reception or get the snap back because he gets to the said mock. He's going to fight inside the 10. Bad snap from Gavin Zachary. Came a little bit in low to the left. But Kale Jarvis able to finally field it and get it off to said mock. Could have been disastrous there as you talked about play before, Jim, making sure you're keeping control of the ball here. You'll have Schneider to the short side right. Check that middle of the field. Solberger cruising five-yard line down to the three. As he's a little slow to get up, pops back up now. Just taking his time. Not sure if he was trying to do a push-up and flex on the guy that he ran over there, partner. But he gets it down to the two-yard line. 53 seconds remaining here in the first half. Let's check in with you down on the sideline, Mark Milano. We know that... The Aviators, this defense, that last possession, they were out there on the field for a long time. Uh, you come back out here now, you get a different quarterback, and now you see what Kale Jarvis is able to do, getting them down with a big pass to Nathan Baker, and now they're physically pounding on them, that defensive front with Matt Solberger. Yeah, this is really an impressive drive, and one of the things Dan DeGeorge said when Ty Miller was going out, he said, somebody else is going to have to step up, and so you've seen two guys do that right now. But I'll tell you what, Matt Solberger took one heck of a shot down here right now. So, you know, Coach Kusieski is just telling me to get out of his way over here. <laughs> they hold the Lions, Coach. But uh, I'll tell you what, this is a really impressive drive by the Blue Sticks right now. They have one timeout here left. 
So I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they could still run the football one more time. I don't think you're going to see the ball go up in the air here. Watch out for Coach Kuzieski. He looks like he's still got a couple series left in him. You're right, Mark. They bunch him in there tight, Jim. You see they Baker. Probably. He comes in tight from the right hash. They're going to put him in motion, and you're going to have a flag come out. They inserted Will Butler in the run game because he's so much bigger than Jarvis. Poses more of a threat downhill. Again, another illegal motion penalty that has plagued both teams. See if Lake's going to be able to overcome this, which they were able to do that ball last drive. That penalty is going to push them back to the seven yard line. 53 seconds remaining here in the first half. 7 7 ball game. We got a good one on our hands here in Alliance. Larry Karras Stadium welcoming us in for opening weekend of Ohio High School football. That Sun partner has finally gone down. Will Butler keeps it himself. Following Solberger, fighting inside the five, stretching for the goal line. He'll make it down to the two, bringing up a third down with 40 seconds remaining. Clock still rolling, 38, 37. Butler gets it back up to the line of scrimmage. Big fella trying to substitute in for the Alliance Aviators, not able to get out there fast enough. And Coach Goodman will burn his final timeout of the first half. You see the replacement there, Jim. You had to bring in a little bit extra beef up front. You knew the run game was coming downhill at you from the two-yard line, tried to sure up the D-line. Getting a big guy in from the sideline from point A to point B doesn't happen as quickly as some of you uh, skill weapon guys. Uh, Coach Goodman is going to have to burn the time out there, but rightfully so. I think that gives your defense a little bit of time to take a good breather and, and try and figure this thing out here on third and two, how you're going to keep this Lake Blue Streak offense out of the end zone. Yeah, it was a really smart timeout. As you said, they were not able to get a guy onto the field. Would ended up getting a penalty, which would have set up a third and one as opposed to a third and two. Lake right here, though, TJ, they still have one timeout left, depending on this third down. And I can't imagine they're going to lose any yards, but they're absolutely in four down territory. You got a quarterback who's 6'2, 215, 217. You got an offensive line that's experienced with big guys up the front, and you can always. Let Solberger be your lead blocker and let the big quarterback get behind him. Christopher has checked in. Check that. That's Evan Brady at the fullback spot. Solberger, Brady leading for Will Butler. Strides into the end zone. Off of right tackle. It's 13-7 in alliance. The Lake Blue Streaks take their first lead of the ball game. Well, I called it, partner. You... <laughs> You got Solberger in front of you. Now you got next gen Christopher, and you got a quarterback who's 215, and you got a big offensive line. Bunch him in, get him downhill, and let the quarterback get his head down. Great drive, great answer set up by the screen pass that Jarvis threw to Nathan Baker. Big play in that drive, set up the touchdown, and Butler coming off the bench, being able to finish it off. Great job all the way around by that offensive line for Lake. Right tackle, Jack McAvenue caving him down. On the left side of that Alliance defensive line as Dutton puts it up. And they'll say it was no good. I believe he pushed that thing left. Mark, not sure if you were able to see that from your vantage point at all, but uh, the score is going to stay 13-7. to Kind of hard with a little bit of that sun still creeping in on us to see if he pushed that left or if that went right or the right. Yeah, he sliced that one, TJ. That was a slice. And, and I think that, you know, when talking to Dan George, that you may see them going for two more than going for the PATs just because they're, they're not real sure of that kicking game that they've got right now. Boy, Jim, how many great kickers did we get a chance to see last year? You know, we saw Paxos. We saw the young man Noro who kind of took over there for green. Eli Moreau doing some good stuff. Robbie Smart, player of the game for us last year, setting a school record. We saw him able to win the East-West kicking competition for the Pro Football Hall of Fame East-West All-Star game. We had a chance to work alongside our friends over there and uh, saw Robbie Smart able to take home some hardware. West team able to win that ball game 26-12, played back on July 23rd. 29 seconds remaining here in the first half. Got our guy A.J. Short joining us. We'll have him during the Spirit of Stark halftime show. All right, ball goes out of bounds again on that kickoff, as Mark mentioned. Not very sure of what you have with that kicking game. I'll tell you what you got, partner. You got two kick, three kickoffs, two out of bounds, one that should have gone out of bounds that Alliance tried to field. 
talking about being afraid to, to, to kick the extra point. We can't even kick the ball into the field right. <laughs> with nobody coming at you. Kelton Dutton puts it out. So after just missing an extra point, and after putting it out at the five-yard line, You'll see the Aviators come out with the ball at the 35, their own 35, first and 10, trailing by six from their right hash. We'll see what Zerberg does. No timeouts. He's going to fire it out to the right side, gets it into his receiver. Kayvon Davis, clock continues to roll. 20 seconds, 19, trickling down. 13-7 lead for the Blue Streaks. I just think they're going to let this run out, TJ. There's no need to snap the ball here, risk somebody getting hurt, Blue drop streaks. back and try and throw a Hail Mary. Blue Streaks will get the ball back to start the second half. As we see two seconds tick off, we got triple zeros for the first half of Ohio High School football opening weekend. Aviators in their powder blue and white numbers. White helmets with that blue and red stripe going down the middle of the helmet. Lake Blue Streaks in their classic white unis. Blue and red trim on the sleeves. Blue helmets with the white and red going down the middle on their stripe as well. As we welcome in the Lake High School marching band, we will step aside and get into the Spirit of Stark halftime show. We're kicking it back for some news. We're coming back with some scores, and we're going to be joined by a guy who plays his football right inside this stadium. Division three college football, the Purple Raiders, ranked number one preseason here in the OAC. We're going to talk about it with our guy A.J. Short here after just a few short messages from our sponsors and some news from the station back at iHeartRadio. You're listening to high school football and the Stark Media team on their new home, 99.7 FM and the iHeart Media Radio free app. McNeil and Sons Tree Service have been serving the greater Northeast Ohio area and keeping your property clear for over 20 years. Do you have trees that stretch out to the close to your home or rotted tree that has to go? No job is too big or too small for McNeil and Sons. We specialize in removal, storm damage, stump grinding, land clearing, and more. Contact us at 330-606-1126 today for all your tree service needs. Go to our website at McNeilTree.com to schedule your free quote where the professionals at McNeil and Sons can inform you of your tree health and give you a risk assessment to keep you and your family protected. McNeil and Sons Tree Service is fully licensed license and insured so call us to schedule your tree service at 330-606-1126 mcneil and sons tree service a company you can depend on with a family you can trust McNeil and Sons Tree Service have been serving the greater Northeast Ohio area and keeping your property clear for over 20 years. Do you have trees that stretch out to the close to your home or rotted tree that has to go? No job is too big or too small for McNeil and Sons. We specialize in removal, storm damage, stump grinding, land clearing, and more. Contact us at 330-606-1126 today for all your tree service needs. Go to our website at McNeilTree.com to schedule your free quote where the professionals at McNeil and Sons can inform you of your tree health and give you a risk assessment to keep you and your family protected. McNeil and Sons Tree Service is fully Licensed and insured, so call us to schedule your tree service at 330 606 1126. McNeil and Sons Tree Service, a company you can depend on with a family you can trust. Chris McCready's and his team at Finally Hear Hearing Aid Center in Canton offer up over 30 years of experience for their customers who are hearing impaired. Head over to their website at finallyhearohio.com and schedule your free hearing aid test and evaluation today. They're a best of the best award-winning company that, that prides themselves on customer service. Stop down and see them at 1201 30th Street Northwest or contact them at 492-1212 for an appointment. And thank you for sponsoring Stark Media's finallyhearohio.com player of the game. The entrepreneurial spirit runs strong at Simon Says Promotions. That's why if you've seen us everywhere in downtown Maslin, it's because we're growing. Stop in and see our guys at Spirit of Stark on 409 Erie Street North. If you're in the spirit for that new look, head over to Studio Vibes and tell Allie the Stark Media Team sent you. We've rebranded the old checkered flag building at 256 Erie Street South as Simon Says HQ. Featuring Copeland Paints, Brooklyn Rio Boudoir, Cherry on Top Logistics, Studio Vibes, and we are adding new tenants monthly. Speaking of new, have you seen what's coming out of the vault at the new Tiger Store at 59 Lincoln Way East? New game day prints dropping weekly with new store hours. Trust me, they can't wait to see you. Check us out on social media and find out what's new or for occupancy and employment inquiries, email simonsayspromotions at gmail.com today. Spirit of Stark embodies the pride that each community in our county has for their local schools and teams. That's why when it's time to find the best in custom apparel, look no further than Spirit of Stark, located at 409 Erie Street North. Custom embroidery offered on almost any type of garments, from shirts and jackets to hats, pants, and shorts. Their state-of-the-art equipment allows Spirit of Stark to fulfill any order, big or small. You name it, they can do it. Want to look your best heading back to school this fall? Contact Spirit of Stark at 330-806-6745. We can't wait to hear from you. 
Nobody wants to imagine the heartbreak of losing a pet. But when the time inevitably comes, Eternal Paws will be there for you. We're here for you in your time of loss. We work directly for you and provide private cremation services. However you choose to remember your loving pet, we have many memorial options. Custom urns and jewelry, clay and ink paw prints, engravings, and more. Eternal Paws Pet Cremation Service. We're here for you when you need to be there for them. This is the Spirit of Stark Halftime Show on the Stark Media High School Football Game of the Week. From the Ohio News Network, this is the Ohio Education Association Tonight in High School Football. Named best sports program in the country by the National Association of State Radio Networks. Tonight in High School Football is presented by Bex Hybrids. Now here's your host, Skip Mossick. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tonight in High School Football's Halftime Report here on the Ohio News Network. Throughout the season, we'll break down regions and talk some high school football in different areas of the state. And this evening, we'll talk some Central Ohio high school football with Lee Cochran from This Week News. Lee joins us next on the Ohio News Network. I'm Scott DeMauro, president of the Ohio Education Association. And on behalf of the OEA's 120,000 members, we're proud to bring you tonight's game. OEA members teach in Ohio's public schools and universities. We drive your kids' buses and serve them lunch. We're school nurses, custodians, librarians, and more. And we coach your kids on the field. We believe in great public schools for every student. And we believe our team is always stronger when we stand together, just as we have for 175 years. This is Doug Ute, Executive Director of the Ohio High School Athletic Association. High school coaches can be the biggest influence on kids having a positive experience in sports. Sports set the foundation for life lessons that remain long after playing days are over. This is Gene Smith. Please join Life Sports at The Ohio State University and The Ohio High School Athletic Association as we partner with the Susan Crown Exchange on its Million Coaches Challenge. Get involved and learn more at go.osu.edu backslash Coach Beyond. This is WHOF FM HD2 North Canton and W259BW Canton. From the Flynn's Tire and Auto Service Studio. Right tire, right price, right now. Flynn's Tire. At C.H. Vallis & Associates, we've been proudly serving the greater Stark County community for over 78 years. Locally owned, we cover your home, auto, business, and life insurance, along with your group benefits. Our partnership with auto owners has allowed us to span not only Ohio, but throughout the entire country. Did you know that auto owners, an A++ rated company by AM Best and a Fortune 500 company, has ranked C.H. Vallis & Associates a top 10 insurance agency in the state of Ohio? From your basic home and auto needs to insuring some of the largest companies in America, there's a reason people choose C.H. Vallis & Associates, and auto owners. Our dedication and passion for our clients and their coverage is part of our commitment to excellence. For all your insurance coverage needs, there's only one call to make, and that's C.H. Vallis & Associates, located at 1302 South Main Street in North Canton. Contact us at 330-494-2776 today and see the difference in customer satisfaction. Chris McCready's and his team at Finally Hear Hearing Aid Center in Canton offer up over 30 years of experience for their customers who are hearing impaired. Head over to their website at finallyhearohio.com and schedule your free hearing aid test and evaluation today. They're a best of the best award-winning company that, that prides themselves on customer service. Stop down and see them at 1201 30th Street Northwest or contact them at 492-1212 for an appointment. And thank you for sponsoring Stark Media's finallyhearohio.com player of the game. McNeil and Sons Tree Service have been serving the greater Northeast Ohio area and keeping your property clear for over 20 years. Do you have trees that stretch out to the close to your home or rotted tree that has to go? No job is too big or too small for McNeil and Sons. We specialize in removal, storm damage, stump grinding, land clearing, and more. Contact us at 330-606-1126 today for all your tree service needs. Go to our website at mcneiltree.com to schedule your free quote where the professionals at McNeil's and Sons can inform you of your tree health and give you a risk assessment to keep you and your family protected. McNeil and Sons Tree Service is fully License and insured, so call us to schedule your tree service at 330 606 1126. McNeil and Sons Tree Service, a company you can depend on with a family you can trust. 
This is tonight in high school football on the Ohio News Network. Once again, here's Skip Mossick. Welcome back, everyone. Halftime of your game broadcast as we talk a little Central Ohio high school football this week at halftime. Pleased to be joined by Lee Cochran from this week's Sports. And Lee, is it just me or when you take a look at the teams here in Central Ohio, is this as deep as we've ever seen high school football here in the Columbus area, really in all divisions? Well, first of all, it's great to be back. I know when the season comes back, I come back on the show so that's a that's a good thing for football um, <laughs> but yeah you know I, I, I think in, in you know I came here in 1993 and Central Ohio did have a great reputation and it just continues to grow and yeah there are so much depth in Central Ohio at all divisions that I mean you you do have some of the teams that stand out year in and year out, like a, a Pickerington Central. You know, Pickerington Central is always going to be there. They have been for the last several years. You know, it's just when you see a team like, you know, Big Walnut in Division Two last year, hadn't had a winning season since 2014, have an undefeated regular season. You know, it's it just, it, it, that's one of the exciting things, you know, and is to see what teams are going to make that surprise move. I mean, Upper Lincoln was another one. You know, when you think up Arlington football, you think, okay, they, they, they won a state title, uh, and, and they're traditionally good. Well, I mean, they'd struggled the last several years, had a couple winning seasons, but, I mean, they put it together last year and had an amazing run. Well, Lee, besides talent, one of the reasons for the depth is the depth of some of the coaching staffs here in Central Ohio. Nice piece a couple of weeks ago by you guys. You know, some former prominent head coaches who have come back to serve as assistants, you know, some at other schools and some really big names. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you've got Buddy White over at Hilliard Bradley, Mark Solis at uh, Hilliard Davidson, Mark Crabtree at the sales for the second year, uh, Vince Trombetti, he's back as an assistant at, at uh, Worthington Kilbourne. You know, there are different reasons. You know, some just want to change. You know, um, I, know I know in the case of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Buddy White, he just, you know, had, had he said he'd been a head coach long enough. And I, th I think there's something to it to when, you know, if you're a head coach, even at the high school level, it's almost like you're the CEO. But there's a little bit of a transition. I mean, you go from the guy making the decisions to the guy listening to the decisions being made and following them. Well, Lee, this is certainly the case for schools from all across the state. You know, some have moved to different divisions this year based on enrollment numbers and competitive balance. Of the Central Ohio schools that moved, which I guess benefited the most in your mind that moved down, and which will have the biggest challenge having been moved up a division? Well, I guess when I looked at it, the first thing I thought of was uh, Division Three, Region 11, because you had both Hartley and the Sales move out. You know, uh, that opens it up quite a bit. Bloom Carroll moved in there from Division Four, but you've got DeSales moving up uh, from uh, into Division Two, Hartley moving back down to Division Four. Right. That's the one I'm keeping my eye on right there. You know, um, you, you've got uh, Kip Columbus, which is in a short time gaining quite a reputation. You know, on the field and among college uh, coaches, you know, they jumped two divisions up to four. I look at it and think Division Three, Region Eleven got a little bit easier year and uh, Hartley in Division 4. That's outstanding for that program. Well, Lee, this is year two for the full season expanded playoffs. Do you get the sense that some would prefer a, a later start and just move the finals back or you know, just leave things as they are now? Well, I think if you talk to a lot of the coaches, they would they miss that extra week of preparation. And I, I understand that. They, they've gotten a little bit more time this summer. But if you start the season later, then you, know, you, you go into more potential cold weather games. And I get that's part of football. But you, you, I, I don't think they want to do that. I guess the one thing I would like to see is the OHSAA stay at you know 16 teams per region outside of Division One because I just I just don't like Division One being 16 teams when there's 18 or 19 teams in each region because you know there just there just weren't any you know 16 and one. Uh, 15 and 2. They just, they just weren't good games. Lee Cochran, for folks around the state who want to stay up to date on high school sports in Central Ohio, they can do so at thisweeksports.com. We appreciate you jumping on. You know we love talking high school football with you, okay? And I love talking football with you, Skip. Thank you. And we'll be back to wrap up the Ohio Education Association tonight in high school football halftime report presented by Bex Hybrids next on the Ohio News Network. Now is a great time to schedule a back-to-school dental appointment. 
Dr. Thomas Kelly, president of the Ohio Dental Association, is here to tell us more. Your child's smile is as important to us at the Ohio Dental Association as it is to you. Here at the Ohio Dental Association, we look forward to partnering with you to help them maintain a healthy smile that will last a lifetime. Low sugar snacks paired with great brushing and flossing habits can become healthy ways of spending quality time together. Make sure you and your kids see an Ohio Dental Association member dentist twice a year for regular checkups. Ohio Dental Association member dentists are located throughout the state and are dedicated to providing the highest quality dental care. These dentists, through the ODA, have access to superior ongoing education, training, and resources. Ask if your dentist is a member of the Ohio Dental Association so you know you're being treated by the best. For more information, visit associationsadvanceohio.com and most importantly, keep smiling. The entrepreneurial spirit runs strong at Simon Says Promotions. That's why if you've seen us everywhere in downtown Maslin, it's because we're growing. Stop in and see our guys at Spirit of Stark on 409 Erie Street North. If you're in the spirit for that new look, head over to Studio Vibes and tell Allie the Stark Media Team sent you. We've rebranded the old checkered flag building at 256 Erie Street South as Simon Says HQ. Featuring Copeland Paints, Brooklyn Rio Boudoir, Cherry on Top Logistics, Studio Vibes, and we are adding new tenants monthly. Speaking of new, have you seen what's coming out of the vault at the new Tiger Store at 59 Lincoln Way East? New game day prints dropping weekly with new store hours. Trust me, they can't wait to see you. Check us out on social media and find out what's new or for occupancy and employment increase, email simonsayspromotions at gmail.com today. Spirit of Stark embodies the pride that each community in our county has for their local schools and teams. That's why when it's time to find the best in custom apparel, look no further than Spirit of Stark, located at 409 Erie Street North. Custom embroidery offered on almost any type of garments, from shirts and jackets to hats, pants, and shorts. Their state-of-the-art equipment allows Spirit of Stark to fulfill any order, big or small. You name it, they can do it. Want to look your best heading back to school this fall? Contact Spirit of Stark at 330-806-6745. We can't wait to hear from you. At C.H. Vallis & Associates, we've been proudly serving the greater Stark County community for over 78 years. Locally owned, we cover your home, auto, business, and life insurance, along with your group benefits. Our partnership with auto owners has allowed us to span not only Ohio, but throughout the entire country. Did you know that auto owners, an A++ rated company by AM Best and a Fortune 500 company, has ranked C.H. Vallis & Associates a top 10 insurance agency in the state of Ohio? From your basic home and auto needs to insuring some of the largest companies in America, there's a reason people choose C.H. Vallis and & Associates and auto owners. Our dedication and passion for our clients and their coverage is part of our commitment to excellence. For all your insurance coverage needs, there's only one call to make, and that's C.H. Vallis & Associates, located at 1302 South Main Street in North Canton. Contact us at 330-494-2776 today and see the difference in customer satisfaction. This, this is ONN. All right, thanks once again to Lee Cochran from this week's Sports for talking some Central Ohio high school football with us this week. Enjoy the second half of your ball game. I'm Skip Mossick on the Ohio News Network. This has been the Ohio Education Association tonight in high school football. Presented by Bex Hybrids from the Ohio News Network. Here's the latest from ABC News. I'm Lionel Moise. Not fit to be Speaker of the House, Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy says fellow House Republican Liz Cheney, Vice Chair of the January 6th Committee, citing McCarthy's dismissal of the seriousness of the attack on the Capitol. He's been completely unfaithful to, uh, to the Constitution uh, and demonstrated a total lack of understanding of the significance and the importance of, of the role of Speaker. So... I don't believe he should be Speaker of the House. One of the so-called ISIS Beatles, British nationals who joined the terrorist group in Syria, gets punished in U.S. federal court. ABC's Andy Field in Washington. Life sentences for the man who helped kidnap and kill his daughter, Kayla, is not much comfort for her father, Carl Mueller. We're hoping that now with the end of this trial, anyone, any place that knows anything about what happened to Kayla will come forward. El Shafi El Sheikh sentenced to eight life sentences for his part in the kidnappings and murders that included Kaylor Mueller, Stephen Sotloff, and Peter Kasich. In Ukraine, concerns are growing over a potential nuclear disaster. Several airstrikes reported near Europe's largest nuke power plant. ABC News national security and defense analyst Mick Mulroy. The munitions that are being used are substantial and could cause serious structural damage. I can't talk specifically about the containment uh, mechanism around the nuclear reactors. I'm not an expert in that area. But I would think that you wouldn't want any explosions going off 
near a nuclear site. The U.S. for the first time says it will give Ukraine Scan Eagle surveillance drones, mine-resistant vehicles, anti-armor ammunition, and howitzers to use against Russian invaders. State-level legal battles over abortion continue in Michigan after two days of hearings. Circuit Court Judge Jacob Cunningham issuing a preliminary injunction that bars prosecutors from filing charges against abortion providers, adding, The court reminds the public that the final day to register to vote is October the 24th, 2022. This is ABC News. If you haven't switched to MediShare yet, two big reasons to at least consider it and why it makes so much sense right now. Number one's inflation, which is just affecting everything. It makes sense to say, okay, where can I actually save? Well, you could save a lot in one fell swoop if you switch to MediShare. The typical family saves $500 a month. Secondly, your conscience. MediShare members aren't forced to pay for things they don't support or believe in, and that's a big deal for a lot of people right now. They want their money to actually help people. And one more reason, you can trust MediShare. It's been the gold standard for healthcare sharing for more than 25 years. It works, and members love it too. It has double the customer satisfaction rating compared to health insurance. So now's a great time to consider making the switch, and they're very easy to talk to. MediShare has great customer service. You can even get a price within two minutes. Here's the number. Call 877-26-BIBLE. That's 877-26-BIBLE. 877-26-BIBLE. An event at New York City's Public Library today to show support for Salman Rushdie. The author is recovering after he was stabbed during a public appearance last week. Iranian clerics issued an edict calling for his death in 1989 when they declared his novel, The Stanic Verses, to be blasphemous. Suzanne Nossel is CEO of PEN America. We celebrate Salman's perseverance, his creative perseverance and bounty. His perseverance in the face of peril, his perseverance on behalf of ideals and principles that we must recognize will never be truly secure and will always demand our vigilant, valiant defense. The man charged with attacking Rushdie has pleaded not guilty to attempted murder and assault. A Florida grand jury Friday recommending removing four members of the Broward County School Board, accusing them of mishandling school safety programs ahead of the 2018 mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School that left 18 students and staff dead. Lionel Moyes, ABC News. This is the Spirit of Stark Halftime Show on the Stark Media High School Football Game of the Week. Welcome back in to Alliance inside of Kara Stadium. TJ Downing, Jim Ballard, Mark Milano, the Stark Media crew out here for opening weekend of Ohio High School football. Lake Blue Streaks on top of the Alliance Aviators, 13-7. to And while we're situated here inside of Dom Capers Press Box on these beautiful grounds where the Purple Raiders play their football, we're going to bring in a Mount Union Purple Raider right now, A.J. Shorts, joining us on the Spirit of Stark Halftime Show. Remember to check out our guys over at Spirit of Stark, 409 Erie Street, north for all your custom apparel needs no order big or small that these guys can't fulfill stop out and see them at 409 erie street north right across from the maslin rec center get all your stuff logoed up get all your apparel done all your branding needs they can do it at spirit of stark aj shorts in the building man hey, you're, hey. In, you're you're in the middle of training camp right now yeah and we got crazy. you to come out here for some high school football i know yeah. legs are a little sore how you feeling right Just now a little bit uh it's my first time playing football in two years uh, i had a knee injury but uh it feels good to be back it feels good to be back man yeah i know it's um it, it's a special thing here in alliance here on the university of mount union everything that's been done what what our guy over here started back in 93 and what you guys are expecting to get back into that deal and start competing for a national championship this season. How is the team coming together? Coach Jeff Dart kind of putting his thumbprint, his his, his feel on this team, and, and where are you guys at right now? Yeah, uh, Coach Dart's an amazing coach, an amazing leader of men, uh, and he really uh, reiterates that in us every single day. He's a leader of men, and, uh, you know, we're, we're doing great. Uh, every day we're getting 1% better uh, towards our goal. Our goal is 15 wins. It's not 14, it's 15 wins, so we just got to keep going. and keep fighting for it uh scrimmage tomorrow with uh w and j joint practice so another uh, mount union guy another, mike sirianni another day to get better so another day <laughs> to get better be uh one step close to our goal of championship so yeah you know you talked about uh coach dart being the head football coach now son-in-law of larry karras the legendary larry karras the goat larry karras karras stadium now and my man just can't stop coaching, can he? For those of you out there that don't know, Coach Karras has been retired as the head football coach at Mount Union. Jeff Dart, 
has taken over. His son, Vince, has left to be the co-offensive coordinator with another Mountain Union guy, Jason Candle, up at Toledo. Coach Karras stepping back in as the quarterback coach. AJ, you're battling uh, to, to, to be one of the backups behind Braxton Plunk, who's a preseason All-American, had an unbelievable season the last couple of years. Come, you say you, you talked about coming back from that uh, tough ACL injury in that knee. Tell me it's, it's not running in the family because we know Big I, Brother I C yeah, <laughs> We not. know Big Brother Cecil I hope not. came hope back from, from his knee yeah. injury. But uh, it's good to have you up here. And, and as you talked about, camp is just now coming to an end. You got W and J coming in for a scrimmage tomorrow, yeah. and then uh, next week you got you're going to uh, scrap it back up. Uh, coming into camp uh, this fall, what are some of the things that you were just looking to, to, to build on to get back into? Is it just being comfortable taking the snap and pushing off that knee and, and, and yeah. driving off that knee? Or uh, you know, uh, I did spring ball, and uh, the big thing for me was just, uh, you know, releasing on time. It's a big difference between high school and college, and I had to learn that, you know, uh, reading the defense, breaking it down. I know the plays. I know everything to do. Just Opening the kickoff game. of the second Almost half out to the 50-yard line. Almost there. But it was, it was uh, basically just getting adjusted to the college ball. Uh, I know how to do everything. It's just being confident in myself and getting out there. And that was really it. I'll tell you what, I had I, I really enjoyed working with you over the summer at Bauer Quarterback Academy. We're definitely going to have you back out. Definitely an honor. Appreciate you coming coming out, joining us at halftime, to spend some time with us the, the night before the big scrimmage tomorrow. Yes, Best advice I give you, we're talking a little bit off camera about <laughs> some things that are going on, some yeah. adversity a little bit. Just stay within yourself. Be smart with the ball if it's not there. Throw the ball away or check the ball down. Every pass play, where's my check down? Where's my throw away? Yes. On every Catch play. up with you Stuff one more fan, time after this down. next play here yes, from their own 49-yard line. Solberger going to get the handoff. He'll fight across the 50 down to the 48 of the Alliance Aviators as we're just underway here in the second half from Alliance. 13-7 lead for the Lake Blue Streaks. Got the ball back here to start this second half, and they are driving already with a second and seven ahead of them. Kale Jarvis comes back up to the line of scrimmage in the shotgun. Solberger on his right hip. He's going to hand off to him. He cuts, starts left, cuts right, fights for a first down, carrying a defender all the way to the 40-yard line. First and 10 for the Lake Blue Streaks. A.J. Shorts, when you start thinking about your time as a high school football player and now you're trying to transition into a college football player, what are some of the things you miss about Friday Night Lights? Uh, just the feeling of, you know, I grew up at Brush. You know, I'm from Brush High School in uh, South Euclid, Lenhurst, and I grew up there watching my brothers play there. and It's just different, the home feeling, like you fighting for your city almost. You know, it's just different. And the guy that you grew up with from kindergarten, that's what I miss the most, playing with the guys I grew up with. 11 minutes on the clock here in the second quarter, just underway. Solberger gets another carry there. He's at the 30, down to the 25-yard line before he's upended by number 17 on the defense. Do got a flag. Obie Jones. Down. Could be a hold. It's on the backside. Solberger going off right in between right guard and right tackle. Huge hole. Boy, that thing opened up. You could have drove a Mack truck through there as our officials waiting to get the call from the white hat as he walks over. They're going to say it was a block below the waist on the aviators. So some more real estate going to get tacked on. The end of that Solberger run. Quick scoreboard update for you. Spirit of Stark scoreboard update for you. 21-14, Northwest up over Norton. 21-6, Hoover over Bookdale. 21-7, Menner leading McKinley. And 20-10, Moeller over top of Maslin. We're going to catch up one more time here with A.J. Shorts before we let him get back. Uh, I know you guys probably got a little training camp curfew tonight, especially if you got the scrimmage tomorrow. I know you want to get geared up. So we'll finish up with you after this play here. Appreciate you spending some time with us. No Mount Union Purple Raiders got that fresh field out there, that nice purple. And that's where Cale Jarvis will hand off to Solberger as he gets across the line of scrimmage and picks up one. They'll give him the 19. Check that. They'll give him the 14 inside of the 15 as the clock rolls. 10-38, 13-7 lead for the Blue Streaks. Looking to tack some more on. You know, Mark Milano, TJ, talked about this earlier with the amount of numbers or the amount of kids that Lake has on the sideline compared to Alliance. Lake looking to impose their will, wear this defense down. They spent a lot of time on the field, this Alliance defense, in that second quarter. Shotgun for Jarvis. He rolls out to the left, gets a block from Solberger. He's going to look to fire it out to the sticks at the five, and it goes over his head, incomplete, third and nine coming up. It's the third time they've run the uh, the smash concept, TJ. you got a whip route by the outside and a corner route by the inside. It's an easy read. As soon as you take the snap, you get your eyes to the corner. If the corner bails at all, get three steps downhill and put the ball on the hitch. 
the quarterbacks are not getting the ball out and out quick enough. They're waiting too long on the read, and they're giving the corner an opportunity to sink underneath the corner out and then be able to rally back under the hitch. A big offensive line led by McAvenue, Styles Dietz, Anthony Miller over at left tackle, Gavin Zachary. Fees are in there as well as Solberger gets the carry. Not going to be enough for a first down. He's going to get to the 11-yard line. you got some fighting going on between Jones and also number 21, Landon Gardner. So we'll see who that ends up going against, Jim. It's going to go against the Lions, TJ. You can see him kind of guys with a, a lot of guys with their hands on their hips, looking a little tired to start the second half. And now all of a sudden on a key third down, it looks like there's going to be a personal foul penalty after the play was over, just losing your cool. Obi Jones didn't call his name much in the first half. We call it here, not for the right reasons. That's going to give Lake even more room. All right, need to know now, who is the pride of Brush High School? Because I had a chance to graduate and play alongside Roy Hall. He was one of my wide receivers. Had a chance to groom Marcel Frost as he kind of came in as a defensive end, and I was playing tackle against him. Uh, and then he transitioned over into a tight end. It was a big reason that we went up into Ann Arbor and we beat Michigan in 2005 for the Big Ten Championship. After this play, as Will Butler just checked in, I'm coming back to my man here. I need to know who the pride of Brush High School is up in Lindhurst. 9.54 on the clock, 13-7 lead for the Blue Streaks. I'll tell you what, you want to throw a guy in the mix there, TJ. It's the new head coach at Brush, first-year head coach. If the name sounds familiar, it's because it is Ricky Powers. One of the best running backs to ever come out of Summit, Summit County or Northeast Ohio. All he did was start as a true freshman at Michigan, break the freshman rookie record, had some injury issues, where, he, and then he kind of fumbled a little bit, and some guy named Tyrone Wheatley, who was pretty good, played about 10 years in the NFL, started for the Raiders, ended up getting some of his carries, but that's Ricky not, Powers giving back. As number after six Bookle. comes into the ball game, Will Butler will talk about a little – Tyrone Wheatley action. He's going to turn. He's going to hand off to Solberger, and he's going to get stopped at the five-yard line. That's going to be enough to move the sticks. First and goal, 13-7 lead for the Blue Streaks. 9.30 on the clock here in the third quarter. All right, who is it? I was just hoping he was going to say uh, himself. You know, he, said, <laughs> he said, I'm about to be that guy. Dude, he's the, it's definitely uh, Roy Hall and Farrell Brown for sure. Farrell yeah, Brown. Brown. Yeah, Roy Tied Hall and Farrell Oregon. Brown. Then he go to Oregon, right? Yeah, he's starting right now for the Texans. So those two are definitely the pride of Brush. Remember him, man. Don't definitely. test me on that now. I remember my Northeast Ohio yeah. boys. Stuff. Butler in the shotgun. Solberger on his right. Butler going to try and keep it. He's tracked down off the backside by big number 78, Kevin Frazier. Came from the backside. Backside tackle, then wall off that end. And Will Butler hesitating a little bit to try and get that fullback out, out in front of him on a little wham lead block. Still got three cracks at it here from the three-yard line, TJ. 6'2", 216, 215, 217, whatever day it is. I'm going to put my money on him to get the ball in the end zone or if he doesn't turn and hand it to Solberger in this power eye formation. Second down, goal to go from the three. Under center, Will Butler turns, hands off to Solberger, shaking and moving, fighting for the goal line. Into the end zone, touchdown, Blue Streaks. 20-7 to seven here in Alliance. Solberger grinding all the way to the goal line for his blue streaks. Again, going over the senior 320 pounder, Jack McAvenue. Yards after contact with Solberger. Lake doing a great job of establishing the line of scrimmage to come out in this second half after putting a touchdown on the board at the end of the second quarter, doubling down, lining up for an extra point to make it a 13 point lead. Dutton on for the extra point, missed his last attempt. Puts it up, so I'll recorrect that because I forgot he missed that last extra point. It is not 20 to 7 before that extra point was made. It is now 20 to 7. All right, one final question before we get you out of here, man. Your brother, obviously a legend, right? Cecil Shorts, everybody knows the name around here. Everybody knows the name around the league. Played some great football. What's some of the best advice that he's given you, being that you're playing the quarterback position? He played wide out, he knows what he likes from a QB, yeah. you want to know how the receivers like it so that you guys can always be in that rhythm because if you guys aren't in sync, the passing game just it, it's not going to go. Yeah. What are some things that, that Big Brother's offered up to you? Uh, you know, he's just told me be myself. You know, he's seen me play. Uh, and he just said be yourself. You know, go out there and complete the passes, do what you're supposed to do, have fun, be confident. He says 
put it where the guys know they, you put it where the guys you know is gonna get it. You know, know your personnel. If it's a fast guy put out there, let him go get it. KYP, right? KYP. KYP. KYP, you got to know that personnel. Like that's Q, that QB. That, 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 that's 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 AJ Shorts, man, appreciate you joining us. You, Everything honor. that you're doing, understand this. If I can give you any advice, just always roll with the confidence and understand that even if you're in a backup role coming out of training camp, you're one snap away, man. Always stay prepared. Thank always so be on much. that grind. You know, Thank you can hit so me up much. anytime, man. You know how we do a BQA, family yes, on yes, and sir. off the field, man. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for y'all. taking the time. Good luck tomorrow. Stay healthy and get after it, my man. Much love, man. Good stuff there by. A.J. Shorts coming in, spending some time. Got a bright future here, T.J., just trying to get that confidence back, coming back from that ACL. You know, it's a plant leg we're yep. talking about for a quarterback. It's a big deal, but feels confident. As I said, spent some time with him this this offseason down at Salem. Coach Johnson was nice enough to open up that facility for me, give me a chance to work with Jackson Johnson, a guy that you know we're going to be talking about this football Ooh. season. Woo! Man, there's some quarterbacks that's down in this area, you got Zerbrug here at Alliance. You got Will the Shields down at West Branch taking on number one quarterback in the state, Lowry tonight, and of course Jackson Johnson of Salem. And we'll get some updates on that game here in just a few. As Zerbrug, he's going to get it first and ten, and this time, for the first time tonight, he only picks up five yards on the first down carry to start the possession. All of his other possessions, first carry, ten yard gain. First down chain mover. So the Lake Blue Streaks, they're picking up on something. Check that. They'll spot him a yard shy of five. He gets four on the carry. Gets it out to the 24. 819 remaining here in the third quarter. Second and six coming on for Zerbrug and the offense. 20 to 7 lead for the Lake Blue Streaks. TJ Downing, Jim Ballard, Mark Milano. Appreciate you rolling alongside us here on 99.7 tonight. Across the middle, Zerbrug fires a dart. Complete across the 40 yard line to the 42. To his go-to guy here this evening. That was Ty and Miles. Zerbrug in the first half, TJ, was 12 for 14 for 139. Going to add another completion to that to make him 13 for 15. Talk about efficiency. Also chipped in with 50, excuse me, 46 yards and a touchdown on the ground to lead this Aviator team first round on the ground. From their own 42, rolling out to his left, Zerbrug has twins out there, fires it to the big man, Kayvon Davis, cuts across the field, 50, down across to the 48-yard line before he's upended on the defense by number four, Joe Garo. You're going to have an injured Kayvon Davis down underground, Jim, and you can see why. Get up, son. Get up. He came across as he was trying to make the effort the extra effort to cut across the grain, working from left hash across midfield, going to the right hat. And Garo gets underneath him. Kind of tried to hurdle him, caught his legs midair and came down on his head. As you heard me say, get up, son. He, he hit the turf partner and he wasn't moving. They got him rolled over. His helmet's popped off. He's pounding the turf. Don't know if it's concussion or not, but he came down pretty hard. They're not reaching for his knee to stretch it or anything, so... Looks to me like they're just trying to get his breath back and uh, take a look at what's going on up top of those eyes and see if he's glossed over a little bit, see if he might be concussed. Leathernecks MC injury update. Mark Milano, check in with us down there, partner. What did you see as the big man, Kayvon Davis, was coming across the field? Yeah, I mean, it was really the impact down on the field. You saw the head kind of snap back a little bit. Uh, and, Jim, you said it. I mean, he laid there awfully motionless for a while, so they're definitely going to check him to make sure that there's not a concussion. Without a doubt, I think when Lake went in the locker room at halftime, they said, hey, guys, we're going to go back to what we do best, running that power football. It's great to see that he's getting up over here right now. But I'll tell you what, they really kind of took it to that alliance defense there. And what a great exchange between Coach DeGeorge and Matt Solberger when they were coming off the field. And, and I was talking to Matt on the sideline. I said, hey, that's a way to run the football. And he looked over at his offensive line and he goes, guys, we're going to the uh, buffet tomorrow. I'm going to take care of you. Well, you're always going to make fans with the buffet. And, Mark, when you think about all the weapons that Zerbrug has to kind of work through, Kayvon Davis being one of the big guys, I mean, it, it looking like he's about 6'2 out there, um, and, and then Ty and Miles, Bergara, I mean, there's a lot to work for here, or a lot to work with, if you're Brendan Zerbrug. 
Boy, I'll tell you what, he does have a lot of toys out there to play with. And I'm surprised that they're not throwing some pass, some more passes to the running backs coming out of the backfield. But without a doubt, they got the guys out on the wideouts that can stretch this field right now. And I think that that's what they're going to continue to do all night long. I think we've seen as much skill as a handoff to Caden Davis. Gets the Aviators across the 50 into the Lake Blue Streak territory down to the 47-yard line. First down coming up now for Alliance. Jim, I think we've seen about as much skill here on these Alliance Aviators as we've seen total in the last seven to eight years for them. They are loaded, bro. They are. I mean, they got a tailback who's a D1 guy. You got a, his brother, Davis, who's at the wide receiver position. He's a stud. You got Next Gen, Baguera who's playing out here, whose dad and uncle were studs here at Alliance and both at Mount Union. As we get a pass, check that, incomplete. That's going to roll down. That'll be dead down at the two. Or check that, second down. That's going to drop them back for two to the 50-yard line. Lions looking to regroup here. Behind the chains a little bit on first down. Zerba going to line up in the shotgun. Got trips to the left. Single receiver into the boundary. And the ball on the right half. Second and 14. 6-10 left in the game. Zerba, as Mark mentioned, looking to fire something out of the backfield. He does over to the left. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage at the 50. Who was it? None other than number six, Will Butler, coming up from the outside linebacker position. Zerbo just getting the ball out on a swing route into the boundary. Doing a great job stringing it out. Not doing too much on that second down play. So they get it reset over there on the sideline. Threw me off there for a second. Third and 14 coming up. From their own 49-yard line, Aviators trailing 20-7, to 5.58 on the clock here in the third quarter. Zerbrug, he's going to roll out of the pocket. He's going to be brought down by number six, Will Butler. Who? Man. Doing it on both sides of the ball. I talked about him, Tej. I'm a little biased, the Ballard Quarterback Academy guy, but he is an X factor that we talked about from the outset. Not only can he hurt you on the offensive side of the ball with his arm and his legs, which we've seen tonight, but he's outstanding at the linebacker position. Fourth and 16, Zerbrug in the shotgun as we get a flag come flying out. False start against the Lions. That's going to push them back even further of a fourth and 21 coming up now from their own 42-yard line. Boy, this third quarter has gone by fast, partner. And as you felt Alliance moving down the field, gaining some advantage just like that at midfield, the Lake Blue Streaks bow up. And they really have kind of put Alliance in a tough situation here, especially if you can go down here and chew the type of clock that you've been doing throughout this ball game. Interested to see, though, if they bring out Will Butler or the young man, Kale Jarvis. Both of them have shown some glimpses here, and Will Butler's still out there on the field. Zerbrug's going to have his feet set at his 27-yard line. Kicks it from the 30, lets it rip. Nice punt. And it won't be fielded. It'll be down at the 20-yard line of the Lake Blue Streaks. So, as we look here, Cale Jarvis will get with Coach Dan DeGeorge at the 25, and he will still run the show. Brody Morgan playing at the guard position. Styles Dietz over at the other. Gavin Zachary, your center. Anthony Miller. I'll tell you what, you, Mark talked about Solberger taking his boys to the buffet. Those boys, all of them, are sitting at the – Jack they, they got Avenue their, and Anthony Miller They got seats up the buffet, buffet right now. buffet killers. They 4. are. 4.55 on the clock in the third. Hand off Solberger across the 25. Running dudes over out to the 28. This is going to be a what I was getting to, partner. They, uh, they got the seats up at the buffet, and it's going to be a steady diet and a steady diet of Solberger, 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 Solberger. They are going to absolutely pound the rock. Alliance looks tired. They scored on the opening drive. 
Lake has all the momentum in the world going right now. They just picked up seven yards on first down, got way ahead of the tape. They're going to continue to just pound the ball until Alliance stops it. Second and third from their 29, handoff Solberger. He starts left, comes back right, eluding defenders, getting his way to the first down marker across the 35. Just made about four guys miss as he turned his body sideways. Started left, cut back over right tackle over there where the big fella McAvenue is. He heard Buffet. He knew to go behind number 76. The big boys are eating. They churn out another first down. First and 10 for the Blue Streaks from their own 40-yard line as we're under four minutes to go here in the third quarter. 20-7 to lead for Lake and Coach Dan DeGeorge. You're listening to the opener of Ohio High School football. It's opening weekend right here on 99.7 FM and the free iHeartRadio app. Solberger gets another carry, goes over right tackle. He spins out of it. He's going to be upended at the 36-yard line. So you can tell as I think Solberger looks over to the left side. He's going to look to his side, and he's going to come out of the game. So your Leathernecks MC injury report. Solberger, something going on with that left arm. He's kind of holding it uh, or carrying it very gingerly but you could tell the way this aviator defense was taking a beat on him jim he just kind of needed a little bit of gas he need he needed to fill up here on the sideline he's getting some water he's kind of stretching out a little bit and coach dan to george just didn't feel the rhythm of the entire thing so he's going to burn a timeout we're going to step aside and take one too you're listening to high school football on your new home for the stark media team right here on 99.7 fm and the free iheart radio app Chris McCready's and his team at Finally Hear Hearing Aid Center in Canton offer up over 30 years of experience for their customers who are hearing impaired. Head over to their website at finallyhearohio.com and schedule your free hearing aid test and evaluation today. They're a best of the best award-winning company that, that prides themselves on customer service. Stop down and see them at 1201 30th Street Northwest or contact them at 492-1212 for an appointment. And thank you for sponsoring Stark Media's finallyhearohio.com player of the game. McNeil and Sons Tree Service have been serving the greater Northeast Ohio area and keeping your property clear for over 20 years. Do you have trees that stretch out to the close to your home or rotted tree that has to go? No job is too big or too small for McNeil and Sons. We specialize in removal, storm damage, stump grinding, land clearing, and more. Contact us at 330-606-1126 today for all your tree service needs. Go to our website at McNeilTree.com to schedule your free quote where the professionals at McNeil's and Sons can inform you of your tree health and give you a risk assessment to keep you and your family protected. McNeil and Sons Tree Service is fully License and insured, so call us to schedule your tree service at 330 606 1126. McNeil and Sons Tree Service, a company you can depend on with a family you can trust. Back in Alliance in Larry Karras Stadium, handoff, check that Jarvis, he keeps it on second down. He'll get it out to the 45 yard line where they stop him shy. Setting up a third and four. 2.41 on the clock. It's rolling. 20-7 to seven lead for the Lake Blue Streaks. Appreciate everybody rolling alongside the Stark Media crew here tonight on opening weekend. TJ Downing, Jim Ballard, Mark Milano down on the sidelines. We'll check in with him here after a bit. Jarvis, twins right, twins left. Fires it across the middle. Caught by Baker. Made the big play in the first half. To set up the Sedmock touchdown. And he's going to get into Aviator territory now. Down to their 43-yard line. Mark Milano. I have to apologize, and you know who I'm going to apologize to. A couple special ladies out there. Laura, Gretchen, Liz, allowing us to do what we love to do here in the falls, man. It started a little bit earlier here. It's still summertime, but you got to give a special shout-out to your wife when she lets you get away for every Friday night for the next three months. I think she was just telling our neighbors last night that she's officially a football widow starting today. Yes, she is. See you in December. Trips left, single receiver right. Jarvis fires it out to Baker again. He gets to the 45, makes a big move at the 40, hurtling defenders inside of the 39-yard line of the Aviators. And Nathan Baker, you can tell, Jim, he's got the ability to take over games, especially from that slot position. We know how dangerous they are, a la Dane McCready's. Or uh, Dane, uh, Dane McCready's we've seen, like a, like a Colin Phillips from Jackson last year. He has the skill set, the speed, and the hands. He could really hurt some people. Yeah, he can, and let, let's talk about the fact that the number one wide receiver for Lake, Ty Miller, the speedster on the outside, is not playing tonight. So, Leathernecks Motor Club 
Update there, no Ty Miller and no need as a big touchdown goes across the middle. Out of the hands of Cale Jarvis. And into the arms, we're waiting on that young man's number. I believe that's number 15 coming out of there, Jim. We're waiting. There's a lot of celebrating going on. Yep. That was number 15 David, on the reception. David DeHaven, 6'4", 190, senior. Little RPO action. Jarvis with a good fake. Flip that shoulder back inside on a five-step slant to the left and throws an absolute dart. Perfect throw from Jarvis that allowed him to break that uh, tackle for a touchdown. David DeHaven came out of nowhere in that five wide receiver set. He stretches this thing out to 27 to seven, minute 10 remaining here in the third quarter. So your assessment partner, when you think about how you break down quarterbacks, um, we saw Will Butler come in here after the Aviators were trailing or after the Aviators were leading. Blue streaks, they make a change of quarterback. Will Butler drives him down there for a touchdown. Kind of just enough to maybe wake up Kale Jarvis. He gets things going. And really, since then, it's in his offensive weapons. Everybody down the line from Baker to Schneider, now to DeHaven. It's 27-7. to I think Kale Jarvis may have gotten a little wake-up call to start the second half. I, I just think it's one of those opportunities that he's had a chance to make some plays. He missed on a couple early, but this second half, he, he looks a lot more confident. He had some big plays on a couple screen passes. That's not pushing the ball down on the, down the field, but we've seen him, you know, on that RPO, throwing a great five-step slant, about 15, 18 yards, right in the soft spot of the defense. He's done a good job of taking what the defense has given him. He's been a little bit late on a couple reads, as as Will, but he's played extremely well. He's moved the ball. He's put some points on the board as well, and I hate the two-headed monster, as you know. We talked about Keaton Rohde and uh, the quarterback at McKinley last Marion year. Williams. Yeah, they had, a, they had success. And so Return far for tonight. the Aviators out across the 20 to the 24-yard line. They'll bring them down as Will Butler leads the defense back out onto the field. Interesting here as we look at our Leathernecks MC injury update. Dan George, first meeting he just had over there was with Matt Solberger as he's getting taped up by the trainers. You know, I guess you're starting to get into that area here. If you shut down Alliance, you put up another touchdown. If you can stretch this thing out to 34-7, to you say, hey, is it time to shut down Solberger and maybe we can get some early reps for his backup? No question about it. The last thing you want to do, you already got Ty Miller on the sidelines, not dressed tonight. The last thing you want is your number one running back to, to get hurt in a, in a situation where you have an opportunity to give some of the younger guys and some of the – uh, younger player, some some run. Zerbro keeps it himself again on <laughs> pretty much every first down. Opening possession of the drive. He's done it with his feet. This time he'll take it out to the 29-yard line, pick up seven yards, second and three coming up. Under 50 seconds to go here in the third quarter, 27-7 to seven lead for the Lake Blue Streaks. If the Aviators are going to get back into the thing as they – get a cheap offsides they're gonna get big number 78 Gavin Hall he jumps off from the nose guard position oh check that not number 78 that's number 48 Bryce Talkington so he pushes the center back gets an easy five yards Zerbrug now pushed out to the 34 yard line first and 10 37 seconds on the clock coach George looking at him like son the ball is right in front of you. Don't move until you see can't it move. Don't one. you? You can't. You can't go by the voice inflection. Zerbrug's a, a savvy veteran quarterback. Twins right, twins left. Zerbrug feeling the heat. He's harassed in the backfield, but he gets out of it. Thirty-five climbs to the forty, looking for the first down marker, but zeroing in was Josh Sedmock, and pushes him out at the forty. Going to set up a second and four. Line to gain. How about the athletic? At the forty-four. Straight run through the A-gap, TJ. Nobody touched that linebacker. Zerbro takes a three-step drop. Guy beelining him and ends up giving him a little shimmy shake and was able to break a tackle. Looked like a for sure sack. Turned nothing into something with a gain of six. 23 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Zerbro fires it in on the screen pass to Davis. Caden Davis, he's still going. First down pickup inside the 50. He's down the sideline to the 40. Making moves before he's pushed out of bounds. 
And they're going to wave him out at the 47 as he was just getting a full head of steam. Looks like one of those, we'll call it right foot, tap that out of bounds line. Boy, is he explosive when he catches the ball. My, oh, my. You talked about it, partner, early in the first quarter, utilizing that screen play. It was timely by Coach Goodman. That, again, right there was another timely one here as we have 12 ticks remaining on the clock here in the third quarter. Down by 20. Aviators spotted up in Blue Streak territory at the 48. Twins to the right. Twins to the wide side left. Caden Davis on the right hip of Brennan Zerbrug. Zerbrug sits in the pocket, feels the pressure, rolls out to the right. Now he's going to climb, fires it downfield, and it's going to be complete at the sticks at the 38-yard line of the Blue Streaks. And I think it's enough to wave it forward, Jim. So, boy, I'll tell you what, you talk about your quarterbacks buying time, keeping the play alive, keeping your eyes downfield. Brennan Zerbrug just did that in spades and picks up a first down with the arm. So poised in the pocket, never looks like he's panicked whatsoever, just has an ability to, to move just as much or as little as he has to. We saw him break contain there and throw a strike. Trips left, wide left, single receiver to the short side right. That's Ty and Miles. You'll have Bagara outside wide to the left. He's going to get a block. As Zerbra goes around the corner, gets it down to the 35 inside to the 31-yard line. Actually, they'll give him the 30. So he's going to be too shy of the first down marker. Line to gain at the 28. Second and two coming up. Appreciate everybody listening to us tonight on our new home. Stark Media's new home on Canton's new country. 99.7 FM. WHOF HD2. Friends over at iHeartMedia. Also got our boy Sammy B working tonight. Moeller taking on Maslin. Last we heard, Moeller was up 20 to 10. As we put four fingers in the air officially, we're going to check in down on the sidelines as we head to the fourth quarter with Mark Milano. Mark, give us your update. Do you know anything about any of the injuries that are currently going on? Thank you very much, sir. I'm going to try to make my way back over to that big sideline right now. But I did just get a score that came in from over at Jackson and East. Jackson's up 20 to 7. So it looks like Jay Lohr is going to come away with this first win. Uh, this is his first time as a head coach. And he talked about the butterflies that he had before this game and the amount of pressure that he was putting on himself. And he said, hey, I just got to kind of pump the brakes and kind of let this game come to me. But right now, I'll tell you what, I I'm surprised because I really thought that after East team with all the athletes that they had, I thought this might have been the year they got Jackson, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. You know, Jim, we've seen that that uh... – Coach Marcus Hayes, he's not afraid to come up and play uh, play the Federal League teams. Come down and play the Federal League teams. Take the trip down here. Last year, I think he played three or four teams inside of the Fed. We'll talk about it more after this play. Starting the fourth quarter off from the Blue Streak 30-yard line, second and two for Zerbrug. Fires it in for a first down pickup to his tailback. Caden Davis moves the sticks down to the 24-yard line, first and 10 for the Alliance Aviators, trailing 20. We knew that... Uh, you know, coming into this season, partner, Akron East, we saw them exclusively at the Kemp Thorne kickoff classic that we ran. They had some studs up there, but would they come down and make some of those similar mistakes that you see in week one? Sometimes they're a little bit more amplified with that East team. I know last year they came down, played Jackson, had 10 offsides. Can't do it. Zerbrug, he's going to do it. Going to the 10, 5, touchdown. Brandon Zerbrug. Making them look silly out there. Cutting against the grain. Gets into the end zone with 11.49 remaining here in the fourth quarter. It's 27-13 in Alliance. Don't count the Aviators out when you got a guy like Zerberg back there taking the snap. His ability to see holes when he runs the ball is so impressive, TJ. He's got the instincts of a running back when he decides to get north and south. He's very efficient, very light on his feet, and we've seen what he can do in the pass game. He's right around 14 for 16 or 15 for 17 tonight. And he lines up for the extra point, puts it through. And it's now a 13-point lead for the Lake Blue Streak. Zerbrug off a 21-yard run, able to put more points on the board for the Aviators. It's 27-14 with Lake getting set to take the ball back. They lead this ball game. They've led since the second quarter. And Cale Jarvis... 
We'll see how he responds. It's going to be Butler that's going in for this series. You know what, TJ? I think it's one of those things where it doesn't matter what either kid does, just like at McKinley last year with Williams and Rody. One's going one series, one's going the other. The exception is once they get close, you know, in the ultra red zone, about inside the seven-yard line, they, they tend to go to Butler because he's a little bit bigger and, as we said, was an all-state running back last year at Mogador. Tough to bring down from the quarterback position. And what that does is it allows you, if you take a snap as a quarterback, to let your running back be a lead blocker, which makes it that much tougher for a defense if you got an unblocked guy in the box. Beautiful crowd here tonight in Alliance inside of Karras Stadium. That's the legendary coach, Larry Karras Stadium, the all-time winningest college football coach in history. 92.9. Any division. Doesn't matter, D1, D2, D3. He's got the record. That's why him and my partner here are enshrined down in Atlanta in the College Football Hall of Fame. Out by Baker to the 15, 20, out across to the 23-yard line before he's brought down. So, as you mentioned, partner, Will Jarvis, check that, Kale Jarvis. <laughs> Kale Jarvis gonna sit, Will Butler's gonna come in, and I guess you call this the first exclusive series start for him since midway through the second quarter. Yeah. You've seen him come in sparingly on some run plays, but now it's his show here. Interesting, it feels like just the same point where Coach DeGeorge put him in on his first full possession. So we'll see what he brings to the table. He's going to go right to left on your radio dial. On his right hash, single receiver, short side left, twins to the left, coverage rolls up, fakes the handoff. He's going to keep it himself, and he is bottled up. Number 32 for the Aviators in there on the tackle. That's Roseboro. And you've got an Aviator injured down on the field. I have to be impressed, Tej, that neither one, neither team has had anybody that has gone out with a cramp. Have to be impressed by the fact that I just dropped a crowd mic about 50 feet like they were dropping those golf balls. Our buddy Mike Desiker over there at Golf Galaxy who's up there dropping golf balls out of a helicopter. helicopter. That was me here dropping a crowd mic that just went 40 feet down. We'll call it 50. And the thing did not break. Boy, when they say that they don't make technology to last anymore, <laughs> I must have got lucky. I'll tell you what, we should play the lottery. <laughs> Thank God that that microphone falling out of that window didn't come down on somebody's head. Ooh. Talk about poking a hornet's nest. Mark Milano, check in with us down there on the sideline, partner. I know we got a Leatherneck's MC injury update. Not sure. I believe that is the young man who just made the tackle down there. That's number 32, Onez Roseboro. What do we know about Solberger? You're over there on the Lake Blue Streak sideline. 27-14 to 14 lead for the Blue Streaks. We've seen him go back in. When do you get to a point where it's, eh, shut it down? Yeah, I don't think that they're there right now i think that if they take you know four or five minutes off this clock they're going to feel a little bit better about that but you know how about from a gamesmanship standpoint nathan baker comes over he's helping stretch out the guy from alliance that's down on the field <laughs> I, I can tell you this i wouldn't have been helping an opponent stretch out if he was gripping up oh come on mark i know that mr jack rose and whoever your high priestess might have been over there at st thomas that they taught you about sportsmanship oh there was a quite a confession. Will Butler, heat checking, going deep downfield. There's a hand fight. And you're going to get the flags come flying in down at the Aviator 40-yard line looking for number 24. That was Dylan Schneider. Ball on the left hash. Alliance went cover zero, straight man-to-man -man across the board. Butler takes the far receiver to the right. Gets it out past the outside of the numbers, a 50-50 ball. Defensive back doesn't look back for Alliance, and Lake's going to get themselves a first down. Anytime that you have a one-on-one, -on -one, TJ. Go for it. You just can't overthrow it, and if you do, you got to miss to the outside, but you got to give your guy a chance to make a play, and if you underthrow it, miss to the sideline, which he did. Defensive back didn't turn back for the ball. It's 45 yards down the field, and they pick up a penalty. Great K job just throwing it up. KYP, what's it stand for? Know your personnel, baby. Know your personnel. Know your <laughs> matchups out there one-on-one. -on -one. The young man, Will Butler, did that. He's going to have two receivers wide to the right, single receiver short to the left. 
Blocking back, stacked over the right tackle. Solberger gets the carry, works himself out to the right. He's got guys coming in at him, hurdles the defender. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, undercuts. They're going to have a flag come flying in, in the backfield, where Solberger made that jump. And you can tell that the Alliance Aviator defense has made a stern effort to not let Solberger beat him. They really have had a have had a good line on him as we've gotten a little deeper into this fourth quarter, just kind of fresh into it here. But towards the end of that third quarter where we saw Solberger get banged up, something going on there with that left arm, he is back in. And you see him kind of trotting off again a little gingerly, Jim. I mean, he's going to stay in there, but you see that there's something going on. I don't know if it's a cramp. You see him stretching out that left calf. We know that we always kind of see that about this time of year. It's so hot, TJ. It was so Whew. humid on the field, as Mark was talking about it earlier. It was probably 95 degrees at the start of the game with the heat index. Had a face mask oh. on Alliance, which is going to hurt them after good defensive play. It's going to be another first down for Lake. But it was hot earlier. I'm truly Ooh. surprised that you haven't had to stretch me out here throughout this thing, partner, because all, all this has been going on up here today, man, as we've gotten ready for opening weekend of high school football. Kind of been rushing around, getting some things done, and we were sweating up here, man. I'll tell you what, you could have baked the turkey inside of this box. I've spent a lot of afternoons up here before calling Mount Union football with our guy Sam Berkwin, and we've had some serious sweat box up here. So much that I makeshifted a trash bag umbrella, so to say, for our equipment in here because I know better. That screen right there, you talk about ants under a, micro, or a, a microscope, magnifying glass. We're frying up here. Feeling better now. Will Butler's feeling good now, too. He's feeling himself. He's stretching his legs out. 30. Inside the 25, making it all the way down inside the red zone. Still fighting for yards inside the 15, down to the 14-yard line. Will Butler, first and 10 from the 42-yard line of the Blue Streaks, takes matters into his own hands, and he's down to the 14-yard line now with a fresh set. First and 10 coming up again for the Blue Streaks, up 27-14, 10-39 remaining in this ball game. Jim, you can see timeout has been burned. Alliance trying to regroup. What a run by Will Butler. And, you know, when Coach Goodman had no choice right there. The longer the game goes on, it, it's bad enough. You got to try and come up and tackle Solberger, right? You got to gang tackle him. He's a guy with a low center of gravity, a five foot nine, five ten kid. Now you got a guy like Will Butler, six foot three, coming downhill with even more weight. It's it, it's at two fifteen, two seventeen, and now you got to tackle the quarterback. This Alliance defense is a little bit worn out. They're a little bit beat up. And Lake is just imposing their will in the second half. They are running the ball at will. All right, partner. At will. At will, man. I'll tell you. <laughs> and I know you got a little thing for your guy, Will Butler. You guys have done a lot of work together. I know you're you're the quarterback guru. I know you like seeing him sling it. But there's something to be said when we see these quarterbacks take off with their wheels, a la Jack Talkington. We've seen Zerbrug. He just did it on the previous series. We know what Will Butler brings to the table. Right now, I want to know where your, your head's at here, partner. Finally here, Hearing Aid Center, our finally here, Ohio.com. Player of the game is going to be coming up here at the end of this quarter. Right now, there's a handful of dudes, I think, that could be sitting here in contention for our game MVP honors. We'll think about it more. We'll check in with Mark Milano as we go along through the quarter. Will Butler, he wants to polish it off, fires across the middle. Oh, what a move by Mr. Baker. And he's moving at the 10. Shakes him to the 5. Touchdown. Wow. Oh, he Ooh. left him at the 5-yard line. Oh, baby. Somebody call the doctor. There are two guys down with broken ankles. What a move in space. Nathan Baker. Shake it, babe. Just as I talk about our finally here, Ohio.com player of the game, I think a young man has emerged. And Mark Milano. Check in with us down there, partner. You're right in the thick of the action. That boy's getting some congratulations down there because he just put on a show. You couldn't pry that smile off at the end of George's face with a crowbar. Extra point is up, and it is good. Dutton stretches it out. 34-14. Mark, we'll check back in and stay down there with you, partner. You saw Coach DeGeorge. He came over there. There was a big, big hug for Nate Baker, and I think he has just kind of said, hey, 
this is my game. I've taken it over. He's had some of the most impressive plays, long plays in this thing. None more than that right there. Although it was only 14 yards, what he did at that five-yard line, that was a total scene down there inside of Kara Stadium. Well, I can tell you this. If he wants to play football at the next level, that's going to be one of the highlight reels that he uses right there. That was impressive. And, again, I go back to what Dan George said. Somebody has to step up for Ty Miller since he's off. And I think that, that he and both Sedmock have done a great job. And, Jim, just so you know, I talked to Ty Miller just a few seconds ago, and I talked to him about getting in the chamber. He said he's all for it. He said, you get him in, he'll be there. All you got to do is call. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for my boy over at uh, Stark Health. Stark Wellness, baby. Stark Wellness to get the – Start get wellness. To get everything going. and Here we go. Give me some new flooring over there. 59 Lincoln Way East. New home for your Stark Media Group. New digs at 59 Lincoln Way East. We'll talk about it here after this kickoff. Dutton smokes it to the 10. Out to the 15. 20. 24 yard line. Aviators will be down. And we'll see Zerbra come out here with 10 26 remaining in the ball game. Trailing by 20. What's the young man number four got in store for us? I know what we got in store for you here at Stark Media. We got our new digs over at 59 Lincoln Way East. Been a long offseason for us at Stark Media. Moved through a couple different buildings till we finally got our right fit. We found our permanent home. We got our neighbors at the Tiger Store right next to us. We got a lot of good people inside of there. We got the Game Day Boutique with our girl Abby Lino Designs. We've got Brits Bows. We've got the Spirit of Stark. We got a whole lot going on with the checkered flag building and Simon Says promotions as we see the Lake Blue Streaks burn a timeout. They're going to be down to one remaining, two remaining for the Alliance Aviators. So, hey, if you're in downtown Maslin, come over and check us out. Stop by the studios. Come in and say, hey, Sam Berkwin, be rocking the Daily Show starting next week. We've already got a couple shows under his belt. Got a couple podcasts that are launched down the line. Tiger Talk with Becca Moore and Scott Ryan. Some good stuff coming from them. If you're in the heart of the city, got to rep what the city's all about. Maslin Tigers, you know how they get down over there, Jim, right across the street. Got my dad's favorite place. We'll give them a shout out. Make sure they got to be a sponsor next week after this shout out. Bender's Tavern, good pizza, good spirits. Walt Downing, the former uh, Playboy All American and Super Bowl champion with the 49ers, loves him some Jackie over there. I know Jackie's a big time sponsor of us over on 106.9 and the iHeartRadio free app. Always hooking up the boys. They did this morning on the Stansbury show. Sam Berkland, Stansbury, talking high school football this morning. I know Jackie sent him over a feast. My man Sammy B got a feast last night over at Perry as the Perry Panthers won their opening game, 51-28 over the Crusaders. Aviators trying to get back into this thing. Screen pass, flare pass out to Caden Davis. As you see some jumping going on there, ripping at the ball. That was number 33 in there for the Lake Blue Streaks. Dane Jarvis was fighting for that ball. He's kind of come in there and spelled Evan Brady. We know that Evans back in. Jarvis has kind of made an impact there from the linebacker spot. Joseph Garo's made an impact there. And we've seen a rotation with Will Butler, Jim. We're going to talk about that a little bit more after this play as we've hit the 950 mark here in the fourth quarter. Jet sweep. Aviators out across the 25, 30, full head of speed, 40. He's still going 45 out across to the 47. So some breathing room for the Alliance Aviators as you see a couple Lake Blue Streaks come back to the huddle now with their hands on their hips. Now we know that uh, we know that our friends over there at Bender's Tavern always taking care of 106.9 and, and Sammy B rocking with them tonight. I'll tell you what, we haven't gotten a scoreboard update, but we want to know what's going on over there between Moeller and Maslin. Last heard, we knew that it was 20 to 10, 34 to 14 here. We'll continue to update you on the Spirit of Stark scoreboard. We know the McKinley Bulldogs are up there battling. Here we go, Brendan Zerbrug, botch snap, tried to get it in there. To Kate Davis from behind. Zerberg was trying to run that Q counter. Looked like a blue streak. Might have got his hand on the back of his shoulder pads where his jersey was. Zerberg still playing hard. I'm really impressed with number four in the sky blue uniforms tonight. Tremendous they're going to get a personal foul against the Lake Blue Streak, so they're going to march that ball all the way down into Blue Streak territory down to the 39-yard line. 9-11 remaining here in the ballgame. So our finally here 
Ohio.com player of the game will be up at the end of this quarter. Remember to check out finally here, Ohio. The Hearing Aid Center, 1201 30th Street Northwest in Canton. Contact them at 492 1212. Player of the game, Nathan Baker. He's put himself in contention for it. Zerbrug, he'd like to have it here if he can mount a comeback. Rolling out to the right, gets away from Jarvis, gets to the 40, into the 35, wisely steps out of bounds as Q, Mr. Baker, steps up and forces him out. How about the speed for Zerbrug once he turns that corner? A track athlete, qualified in state, I believe, and the 200 partner? Yep. Just wheels. Impressive throwing the ball, impressive running the ball, impressive presence pocket presence ability to make good decisions i haven't seen one thing that i'm like man this kid's got to work on some he's he's the full package second and five from the lake 34 yard line 844 on the clock trailing by 20 zerbrug shifts caden davis from his right hip to his left he has trips wide to the left single receiver short side that's miles right he's going up top looking across the middle intercepted number 24 that's mr schneider back there and as soon as I say something, I Dylan Schneider steps right in front of that one, snags out of the air, Jim. As soon as I was pumping him up, he throws a pick. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss of death. I'm sorry yes, about that, sir. But, uh, it is. Tried to throw that seam route up the left side, which he had some success in the first half. Just a little bit late. Ball didn't come out. That clean fluttered a little bit. Safety was able to come over. Didn't have the velocity on it he had on the seam he threw earlier in the first half, and it's going to be an interception by Lake, and you're going to see Lake look to eat up some clock here, TJ, and try and shrink down this game, being up 20, 20 points with 8.39 left in the ballgame. No easier way to do that than behind a huge offensive line. They hand off to Solberger. He gets to work, goes over right side, doesn't pick up a whole lot. They're going to give him a yard out across the 10 to the 11. What as you Kale Jarvis comes over to get the call from Dan to George, as you mentioned, partner, they're going to massage this clock. It'll be under eight minutes to go here in the ball game after this ball snapped. Sorry about that, partner. It was a little quick on the draw. Just getting back in the saddle with you, man. It's been a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a couple hiccups. Giddy up, baby. But uh, no, they uh, they got to be careful here, TJ, because you can't go three and out here and punt and give give Alliance a short field with a guy like Zerbrook who's going to come back in a positive way. First interception of the game in the season for him. Twins wide side left, short side, single receiver right. Handoff, Solberger fighting again for a hard two yards. Gets it out to the 13, setting up a second. Check that third and seven. That's what I'm saying. They, they got to have more positive yardage on first and second down to stay out of the third and seven to, seven to nine range. And when you start getting, you know, in third to seven, Alliance has been dialing up the blitz a little bit. Hurt has hurt Lake at times. They're going to try and, I would say, dial up a blitz here to try and put some pressure and, and, and run blitz as well as pass blitz. Gonna, they're going to line up and play some one-on-one -on -one right here, cover zero, look for them to bring the pressure. Single receiver short side left again, same formation. Twins left, handoff Solberger. He tries to find a crease, use a stiff arm. He's going to climb out to the 15-yard line. They'll stop him there. Fourth down coming up for the Blue Streaks with 7.07 remaining one timeout left for the blue streaks two timeouts for the alliance aviators let's check in with mark milano down on the sidelines what you got for us partner well i can tell you right now the alliance sideline is pretty dejected right now you know that turnover really hurt them i think if they could have gotten that score got a little bit more momentum over there right now but if i'm alliance i'm not hanging my head i mean this is a really good late team that they're playing against here this evening and this Alliance team is going to do nothing but get better. I'll tell you, they're going to be the team to beat in the EBC. It's going to be interesting watching them in Salem and Jackson Johnson going at it. Punts away for Dutton. As it'll check up and roll back, it'll take an aviator bounce. Hit at the 49 and came all the way back inside to the 41. So Zerbrug. He'll have a little bit of room to work here. He's going to have great field position, Jim. 637 on the clock, still trailing by 20, 34 to 14. You know, Mark made a, uh, an interesting comment there. I think a lot of people around the EBC feel that Alliance, with the talent that they have, are the odds-on favorite to win the EBC. Um, when you open up with a squad like Lake, as big, as thick, as talented in the skill department as they are, 
Davis gets the carry, gets the line of scrimmage, brought down by the Lake defense, gains nothing. They'll stay at the 41-yard line of the Blue Streaks. You know, this is a good this is a good thing for Alliance. You take a couple little bumps here, but this is going to tune you up. When you go to play Salem, I think you're going to be that much more ready, knowing that for a while there you were competing pretty hard against one of the better teams in the Federal League. This is a good football team, TJ. I it mean, is. Make, make no mistake about it. This team is loaded on offense. They fly around on defense. They've hurt themselves with some bad penalties in the first half on offense and on that uh, personal foul penalty on defense in the second half that, that led them to a, that led Lake to a score. Another handoff to Davis right up the middle. So sense of urgency may not be fully there when you're trailing by three touchdowns. Uh, third and seven now will be up for Zerbrug from the Blue Streak 38-yard line. Got to score in this possession. Got to score quickly. The sense of urgency, you're right. There, there's not a lot. They need to pick the pace up. You're down three scores. You got a chance if you get a quick score here. You line up and you kick an extra or kick an onside kick and try and get it back. All right, Zerbrug feels the pressure. Blitz off the right side. Will Butler's chasing him down, and the rest of the gang gets there. And I believe the ball is on the carpet. Looks like we got a Lake Blue Streak football unless they mark him down. It is Blue Streaks. They come up with it. Who's the young man on the bottom of that pile? Mr. Sedmock. I'll tell you what. Team defense tonight, partner. You've seen a lot of these guys out here all making plays. Dan Schneider's made them. You've seen uh, Dylan Schneider. Dan Schneider. We're going to the uh, Washington. We'll call them the Commanders. Uh, Daniel Schneider's made some. Dylan Schneider's made some plays. You've seen Josh Sedmock out there. He had the second touchdown of the game. I believe it was Will Butler who caused that fumble, TJ. He forced him, flushed Zerbrug out of the pocket. Quarterback on quarterback crime, so to say right there. But Will Butler, you know, he's made his impact felt on defense. He's played a heck of a game when he's been in there at quarterback as well. He gets the ball back, helps get the ball back for the Lake Blue Streaks. Up 34-14, 5-13 remaining. They'll have the ball from their own 36-yard line, first and 10. Twins left to the wide side, single receiver short side. Solberger gets the carry over left tackle. He'll pick up two yards before being brought down. It's been impressive to watch both these quarterbacks battle because you, you always wonder how it's going to be. You know, Cale Jarvis was the incumbent last year. Uh, he started, a, you know, a whole season as a sophomore for this Blue Streak team. You know, then you get a guy who transfers in, and, you know, he's a little bit bigger, but Cale has done a, an outstanding job of, of, of battling him and and. and giving himself an opportunity to warrant more snaps based on what he did this year. And, I mean, so far, if the game holds, which I'm pretty sure it will, Lake's going to start off 1-0 and and go into next week with a lot of momentum against a very, very good Ooh, Maple Heights team. Here Woo! we go. Maple Heights won the – oh, boy, botch snap. Goes in and out of the hands. Could have been very dangerous of Cale Jarvis. And, luckily, Matt Solberger, Johnny on the spot, plucked it out of the air. As you see, Leatherneck MC injury update, number 31 from Alliance, Adam Zumbar, been all over the place out there tonight. He comes up limping, but he's not going to leave the field. Tough guy alert right there. The man's been locking down that middle linebacker spot. You know, he's kind of battling through a partner. A lot of guys going through the cramps out there. Solberger, Johnny on the spot, scoops it. They're going to need all hands on deck in the skill department. When they take on Maple Heights at home next week, Maple Heights came down, won the Kempthorne Kickoff Classic, powered by Stark Media, back on July 8th. See what they got next week. Blue Streaks across the middle. There he goes, Dylan Schneider. House call. 10-5. Touchdown, and he's waving the arms. A la Baker Mayfield doing a little spin going down there, doing a little two-step at the goal line, partner, looking like number 13 out there on the field. Glimpses of 1993. Went back to the RPO post, and Cale Jarvis throws another absolute dime. Hit him right in stride. Going from right to left on a skinny post. Alliance selling out again with cover zero, bringing the free safety down to play over top of slot, leaving nobody in the middle of the field. All that needs to be done is that wide receiver needs to beat that corner. Good sell up the field by number 24 into the house. They go streaking tonight, baby. Through Ooh, the quad, sweet. maybe into the gymnasium. 64-yard touchdown as we step aside and take a break with 339 remaining in the ball game. Lake Blue Streaks have blown this thing out the water. They're up 41-14. More after these messages from our sponsors right here on your new home for the Stark Media Team, 99.7 FM and your free 
iHeartRadio app. McNeil and Sons Tree Service have been serving the greater Northeast Ohio area and keeping your property clear for over 20 years. Do you have trees that stretch out to the close to your home or a rotted tree that has to go? No job is too big or too small for McNeil and Sons. We specialize in removal, storm damage, stump grinding, land clearing, and more. Contact us at 330-606-1126 today for all your tree service needs. Go to our website at McNeilTree.com to schedule your free quote where the professionals at McNeil and Sons can inform you of your tree health and give you a risk assessment to keep you and your family protected. McNeil and Sons Tree Service is fully licensed license and insured, so call us to schedule your tree service at 330-606-1126. McNeil & Sons Tree Service, a company you can depend on with a family you can trust. Welcome back in on the iHeartRadio app and 99.7 FM. You're listening to the Stark Media team on our new home. TJ Downing, Jim Ballard, Mark Milano back here inside of Kara Stadium. This thing's been fully out of control here as we've gotten into this fourth quarter. The Lake Blue Streaks, big plays from Nathan Baker, big play from Dylan Schneider. It's now 41-14 to as we check our Spirit of Stark scoreboard. Jim Ballard is going to update us on a couple things, and then I think we got some decision-making processes that are going to need to start here because we've got a handful of guys right now that are in competition for our finally here Ohio.com player of the game. What do you got, partner? Right now, Green goes final. Huge win. Picking right up where they left off after graduating a lot of seniors off that unbelievable run they had last year. Green, final, 55-8 over Ellett. Carrollton, 34, Manchester, 13. Right now, Hoover up 28-6. Struthers, 49-0 over Aquinas. Gets his first play. Handoff. Over right guard. Over in Maslin. It's Moeller, 36. Maslin, 23. Maslin battling, 11 14 left in the fourth quarter. 3 17 remaining here. Clock's rolling, 41 14 lead for the Lake Blue Streaks as the Aviators looking over the sideline for the play call. Coach Tim Goodman going to look to want to wrap this thing up here. And they're going to get ready to head to Niles McKinley next week. Twins to the short side, right, twins left, handoff, Davis. He gets popped in the backfield, and he's going to go five yards backward. And this Lake defense, Jim, is now pinning their ears back. But get back to it, my man. We talked about our finally here, Ohio.com player of the game. We talked on break. He said, you got Butler, you got Schneider, you got Baker. Which way do you lean? You got Sedmock, who's come up with a big game. You know, I think after that last touchdown play, I think I have to lean – towards Dylan Schneider, number 24. Big interception, played a big part on the defense, handful of catches in the first half, explodes with a 64-yarder that just completely torched this game. Hate to see that 41-14 to up there because that's my uh, that was my losing score in the national championship game back in 2007. <laughs> PTSD, we got beat by the, PTSD. I, I'm, I'm twitching a little bit here, and that might be from all the fluid that we lost in the first half Seriously. from that sun baking us. I can tell you I am fully dehydrated, if you can tell by my voice. This may be the first time that I'd actually ever wish for cold weather as there's going to be a third and a mile facing the Alliance Aviators from their own 24-yard line. They're going to walk that back inside after a five-yard penalty to the 19. 214 remaining. Where are you leaning, buddy? I I need a little more time. <laughs> can I phone a friend? <laughs> yeah. Two-minute warning, partner. You've been warned. There you go. Pass out in the flats to Miles from Zerbrug. Nothing cooking. He reverses field. He's going to come back to the 19-yard line again, and he picks up two yards after covering about 50 yards of real estate. Mark Milano checking with us down on the sideline, partner. If I can't get a decisive decision out of my wife, Jim Ballard, up here, what, what say <laughs> oh, wow. you What say Playing you down there, hardball, partner? hardball week one. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I, I think it is really tough tonight, and – and it's one of those nights where I think, you could, like you said, you could give it to a couple of guys. But, I mean, Dylan Snyder with the big interception that he had, the touchdown run, uh, yeah, that's, that's probably the direction I'd have to go. Okay. So that's kind of where I was first leave, leading until you see a couple of these guys. We'll see uh, Baker with the kind of final numbers look like here. Uh, it's a punt. It's going to be fielded. Fair caught at the 40-yard line of the Lake Blue Streaks. That was said mock back there. I'll tell you what, if I could phone a friend, and it's uh, a little shout-out, like reconnected with a buddy of mine that I played peewee football with all the way through high school. He lives over in Green. 
My boy LB Keller, man, appreciate you listening out. We played Pee Wee football together way back in the day at Sea Falls. Went down to Florida, played in, in the uh, National Junior Super Bowl. Got beat by a team from Pittsburgh, but we won the Suburban Youth. Beat Stowe that year. And Lee Gissendanner, who went on to star at Northwestern. Learned something new about you every day, partner. Wholesale substitutions for the Blue Streaks. Fresh offensive line coming in. All right, you had pulled up some stats there from the first half. Where was Dylan Schneider sitting there on receptions? I know that there was a handful. One catch, 13 yards. Okay, guess not a handful. One catch. All right. What do we have on stats from Baker from the first half? Baker had one catch for 57. Jeez, you guys are making it hard on me. Will Butler had three, was three for five for 41 yards and a touchdown. Jarvis you got a leatherneck was... MC injury update. You got an aviator down on the field at the 40-yard line. So before this second and 10 with a minute seven remaining in the ball game comes up, aviators trailing 41 to 14. Blue streaks firmly in control after those substitutions. We'll get some more numbers here from Jim as we start to figure out who are finally here, Ohio.com player of the game might be I, i've that that was one for 57 for for nate baker in the first half right that yes. was on the pass Sedmock two catches 26 and a touch gardner two for 15 baker one for 57 snyder one for 13 both quarterbacks were three for five butler had 70 yards 57 of it was on a screen pass uh, Solberger had 10 carries for 46 in the first half butler had five for 25 Bill, wills had probably another 60 with that long run, right around 85, 90 on the ground, another 100, two touchdowns, one on the ground. Tackle on defense, force fumble. Oh. Just get, just, oh. I, I just spit the stats, wow. bro. Wow. I'm pulling, not pulling out of thin air now. Man. We, we, can, we can wait till the end to get the final stats. But again, the, the point is, Lake has played a great team football. 100%. Game 100%. There isn't one guy that's like, man, that guy really stood. I mean, a lot of guys. And I'm, I'm a little biased to Will because. He's never played a quarterback, really. All right. This is first Mark real Milano. action. Well, first real action. We've got a job for you, Mark Milano. I know if you look over to your left-hand side, I see a young Will Butler over there. How about you go over there and get a picture of that young man and get him to snap his helmet off? Because I think Jim's right. I think if we get a second and ten carry here under a minute to go now in the ball game. Only because of the transfer. I, I, and not just because of the transfer. His, but his, his, ability, his impact was felt right away coming in. And immediately on yep. defense with i mean i haven't seen the defensive stats but i he's probably at four or five tackle a force fumble uh and what he did with his oh, arm i think he just passed him there mark back over to your right there we'll we'll lock in will butler as our finally here ohio.com player of the game he's getting a little celebration with his man evan brady right in front of him so mark check in with us down there on the sideline partner Will we have time for an interview with him as well, or we oh. just photos tonight? You know what? We definitely got a chance to get an interview with him. So I want you to catch up with that young man, and we're also going to snap a picture of him afterwards because that's going to bring up triple zeros on the scoreboard. That's your final. 41-14, to 14, the Lake Blue Streaks dominate the Aviators with a total team performance, total team effort here inside of Larry Kara Stadium to open the season, the 2022 Ohio high school football season. It is officially underway. And as we get Mark Milano rolling alongside Will Butler, going through that line, good display of sportsmanship. Just a tremendous game by both teams. The score is a little bit lopsided, but it was not. The score wasn't indicative to how this game went today. No question about it. Both teams fought hard. It was just Alliance, I think, got tired in the second half, TJ. You know, I think that long drive of, in the second half, or the, I should say the time of possession that Lake had the ball was really detrimental to Alliance coming out in the second half. It was hot to start the game. Again, we talked about the, the numbers that Alliance has and not the ability to uh, substitute like Lake could. All right, Mark Milano down on the field with our finally here Ohio.com player of the game, Will Butler. Take it away, Mark Milano. Will, congratulations on a great game. Second half, completely different. What did Coach DeJore say in the locker room to you? Uh, he just told us to stay motivated. We came out after the half. We came out with a score, and we knew we were getting bowled again, so we said let's score and just keep the momentum going. A lot of energy in the locker room, and boys up front were working hard. Boys on defense were working hard, and we just stayed together as a unit. 
I'll tell you, as a quarterback, knowing that's probably one of your best weapons, Ty Miller's out of this game. Talk about some of your other teammates that stepped up for you this evening. Well, a lot stepped up. Uh, Seti, Seti, um, his name's Sedmock, actually. Sorry about that. But he stepped up big for us. Nate Baker stepped up. And we all came together as a whole and played as a unit. You talk about this unit. It was it was rather difficult. We're looking at everybody trying to figure out who was going to be our player of the game. I mean, you played so soundly on both sides of the ball. Game plan coming in here. What was the thought process coming into this game? The uh, thought process was just to go on and win a football game. And so whatever we have to do to win, we're going to win. Now, I have to think, you know, coming over here, you know, you're coming into the school, don't know a lot of the guys, getting to know them right now. They seem to really have embraced you and, and, and like what you're doing in that backfield. Oh, yeah. They're a very welcoming team, that's for sure. And... You know, running and throwing the football, I think you were very successful in doing both of those things this evening. Talk about a couple of those touchdown passes, especially that little seam pass that you had that was down there, one for six. Uh, the pocket was collapsing on the one. I just rolled out, and I knew it could trust. I was said mock. He was stepping in for Ty Miller's spot today. I knew it could trust him. I just let him, and he was there to catch it. So I'm going to let you give your gratuitous plug to Jim Ballard because I know he's worked with you. Talk a little bit about him and what he's meant to you. Oh, he's, he's done a lot for me. He's made me the quarterback I am today, that's for sure. It's only to keep my head down, keep working, and stay humble. Uh, you've done a great job here, and thank you so much. i get your photo taken okay. here. Hold on. That's it, TJ. Great job, Mark Milano down on the sidelines. And, Jim, I know that you've been there before in those situations. Mark's trying to get you here in week one. I know it gets you a little choked up. We've had some special moments with our guy Trevor Van Horn from Green last year. Numerous amounts of quarterbacks that you've gotten a chance to work with. But I think this is kind of a different situation for you here. To see one of your guys that's transferred, knowing what he wants to personally accomplish on the football field, not to just be here tonight. You know, no pun intended on the pony down there as he's done a great job with our guy Will Butler down there. Mark Milano always doing a great job for us on the sidelines. But LB spot, running the football from the Q spot, and stroking it down the middle of the field, producing points for your offense – I think really at the end of the day, it's a no-brainer that Will Butler is our MVP of the game. He's a reason. There's a reason that he was named our finally here Ohio.com player of the game. Here, here, here's what I think, you know, and, and we haven't talked about this, but the fact that he made the throw rolling to his left on fourth and eight after the penalty, throwing across his body 25 yards on a deep crossing route, the throw and the degree of difficulty to execute that throw is so tough. And for them to bounce back, remember, that made it 7-7. Seven to seven. Alliance looked unstoppable on offense the first two or three possessions in the first half. They, the only team that stopped them was themselves with penalties on offense, and then there was a penalty on defense that hurt them. But that play was really a, a momentum shift or, or, or momentum equalizer, I should say, to Alliance because Alliance had a lot of momentum going with the offense. Lake went three and out or, or, four, or three and out on their first possession, really didn't do much. Insert Will Butler, they went down to score, picked up some momentum, and they carried that into the second half. But the key to the whole thing, especially in the second half, Teach, was the offensive line play by Lake. They dominated. They gave the quarterbacks a lot of time to throw. They opened up big holes for Solberger. They opened up uh, big uh, holes for, for Will Butler and, and occasionally Cale Jarvis. It was just a great team win. I'm so happy for Will, and you were talking about it. It is special for me. And it's not special because he's, you know, player of the game right now. I mean, it is. But the adversity that he's overcome – to put himself in this position. He really didn't get a shot as a sophomore. Then he gets he gets moved to running back because the head coach wants to play his nephew at quarterback. And the only time he got snaps at quarterback last year was when the team would go down. And then he'd get inserted in a quarterback. All he wanted to do here was get a clean slate. There was no guarantee for him to start. He came into a new situation, doesn't know anybody, works hard, ends up propelling himself to start on defense and split reps on offense and to see him just loving the game again because yep. he was really broken after his junior year. It was a hard thing to go through. Yeah, I mean, not getting a shot and being just moved to running back when you know that you're a legit D2 quarterback. I've yeah. watched him. Yep. That's what I do. I evaluate quarterbacks. He's one of those guys. And to see him make the most of those opportunities tonight and not try and, try and do too much in situations – was just awesome for me to see. And it's a great lesson for all our BQA guys about overcoming adversity and dealing with situations and keeping your head down and getting a fresh start and just persevering. One game in, but a hell of a start in his career at Lake.
Hell of a game, man. Will Butler, he did it right there, partner. We're going to step aside and take a break, and we're going to get ready to wrap up here on the Simon Says Promotions postgame show. More after this on 99.7 FM and our friends at iHeartRadio on the free iHeartRadio app. McNeil and Sons Tree Service have been serving the greater Northeast Ohio area and keeping your property clear for over 20 years. Do you have trees that stretch out to the close to your home or rotted tree that has to go? No job is too big or too small for McNeil and Sons. We specialize in removal, storm damage, stump grinding, land clearing, and more. Contact us at 330-606-1126 today for all your tree service needs. Go to our website at McNeilTree.com to schedule your free quote where the professionals at McNeil's and Sons can inform you of your tree health and give you a risk assessment to keep you and your family protected. McNeil and Sons Tree Service is fully licensed license and insured so call us to schedule your tree service at 330-606-1126 mcneil and sons tree service a company you can depend on with a family you can trust the entrepreneurial spirit runs strong at Simon Says Promotions. That's why if you've seen us everywhere in downtown Maslin, it's because we're growing. Stop in and see our guys at Spirit of Stark on 409 Erie Street North. If you're in the spirit for that new look, head over to Studio Vibes and tell Allie the Stark Media Team sent you. We've rebranded the old checkered flag building at 256 Erie Street South as Simon Says HQ. Featuring Copeland Paints, Brooklyn Rio Boudoir, Cherry on Top Logistics, Studio Vibes, and we are adding new tenants monthly. Speaking of new, have you seen what's coming out of the vault at the new Tiger Store at 59 Lincoln Way East? New game day prints dropping weekly with new store hours. Trust me, they can't wait to see you. Check us out on social media and find out what's new or for occupancy and employment inquiries, email simonsayspromotions at gmail.com today. Spirit of Stark embodies the pride that each community in our county has for their local schools and teams. That's why when it's time to find the best in custom apparel, look no further than Spirit of Stark, located at 409 Erie Street North. Custom embroidery offered on almost any type of garments, from shirts and jackets to hats, pants, and shorts. Their state-of-the-art equipment allows Spirit of Stark to fulfill any order, big or small. You name it, they can do it. Want to look your best heading back to school this fall? Contact Spirit of Stark at 330-806-6745. We can't wait to hear from you. This is the Stark Media High School Football Game of the Week. Tonight's game is brought to you by C.H. Valos and Associates, Kishman's Fresh Market, and Simon Sets Promotions. Featuring the Tiger Store Studio Vibes, the Game Day Boutique, and Spirit of Stark. Now with tonight's Simon Says Promotions postgame show, here's College Football Hall of Famer Jim Ballard, Mark Milano on the sidelines, and former Ohio State All-American T.J. Downing. All right, back here in Alliance. Final score, Aviators fall to Lake Blue Streaks, 41-14, to an opening weekend of Ohio high school football right here on the new home for the Stark Media Team, 99.7 FM, WHOF HD2, and streaming live all over the world on the free iHeartRadio app. Make sure you check us out, uh, different Stark Media social websites, socials. Uh, go over to Stark Media Team on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Check us out. Give us a follow. Give us a like. Give us a share. Pass it around. We're going to do as much as we can to continue to promote all these great high school athletes around the area. Our guy Sammy B, they're still entrenched over there in Tigertown. 36-23. to 23, Molar leading. Still time left on the clock. So our namesake over at Simon Says Promotions, J.P. Simon, the defensive line coach there in Maslin. They're still plugging away, seeing what they can do with that big Cincinnati Molar football team. We've got a couple finals that have rolled in. Jim mentioned 55-8 to green over Ellett. Haven't gotten a final on McKinley yet. Last we seen, they were trailing by three scores. Um, partner, when you start to think about where we're going to be at next week, we know that Glen Oak Golden Eagles took on Shaker Heights tonight. Don't know if you're able to get a score update on that at all or not. We're going to have a couple stats coming through to you as well here as we get ready to wrap this thing up. But the Glen Oak Golden Eagles are going to host the Maslin Tigers next week. We will be there. You can catch that game right here on 99.7 FM, streaming live on the free iHeartRadio app. You'll be able to catch Sammy B and the crew. They're going to be over here checking out these Lake Blue Streaks that we just got a chance to see tonight. They're going to be hosting Maple Heights. Maple Heights, as we mentioned again, won that kick, Kempthorne Kickoff Classic. They got some serious talent on the field. Um, I think that's going to be a heck of a matchup. You know, this is this was a good skill set for the Lake Blue Streaks to see, knowing what they're going to see next week. Does it help? Obviously, that you've seen Kayvon Davis, who we know left with uh, an injury, Leathernecks MC injury update. We didn't see him back in, but we're going to be wishing some prayers. We know he got up and walked off on his own power. 
But you saw Caden Davis, Kayvon Davis, Zerbrug. You saw Miles. You saw a whole lot of talent coming down the field with Bergara. That kind of plays into your hand as you get ready for Maple Heights, right? Knowing that, hey, we just saw about four or five different skill guys that could burn us any given play. They're not going to see a quarterback like Zerbrug. No. I mean, that, that's a fact. They might see more team speed collectively and more athletes, but as far as the guy who's pulling the trigger at quarterback, they're not going to see a guy like him next week. But they did a great job at the 7-on-7, seven seven. and we saw them win. And uh, they're, they're extremely athletic. Their defensive coordinator is Aaron Bubonix. Gives me uh, flashbacks of back in the day thrown to his older brother, number two, Eddie Bubonix, out on this field. Aaron's been coaching the Shaker Heights for – God, over 20 years now. He actually was a defensive coordinator when when Shaq Washington was the quarterback there, Teej. And now Shaq Washington, in turn, has taken over that program and has done a great job. Uh, He's got a hungry group up there. It was fun to see the way the coach Washington, how he coached those guys, how you know the the aggressiveness and 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 just kind of letting those guys play, letting them do their thing. That was fun to watch. You've got some final stats coming down the line for us. I saw, uh, I believe, we had a 200-yard passer. And Kale Jarvis. Uh, 7 for 10, 184, two touchdowns, very efficient. Zerbra was 20 for 23 Ooh. for 220, sacked three times. Also ran the ball 18 times for 96 yards and two touchdowns. Caden Davis was the leading receiver with six catches for 43. Baguera, three catches for 69. Hawkins, five for 58. On the lake side, it was Matthew Solberger, 26 carries, 111 tough yards, one touchdown. Will Butler, eight carries, 55 yards, one touchdown. Caleb Jarvis, one for seven. As we said, Caleb Jarvis leading passer, seven for 10, 184 yards, two touchdowns. Will Butler, four for six for 55 and two touchdowns. Leading receiver for Lake was Nate Baker, four for 87 and a touch. Dylan Snyder, two for 72 and a touchdown. And Josh Sedmock, two for 26 and a touchdown. Somebody's missing a touchdown because there's four touchdown passes between the two quarterbacks. I'm not, don't remember which one got it. But bottom line is it was a great team win for Lake. As it turned out, the time of possession was pretty close. 24-20, excuse me, 24-40 for Lake and 23-20 for Alliance. Turnovers, Alliance turned the ball over one time on an interception penalties tj lake was five for 35 alliance hurt themselves nine penalties for 78 yards a lot to build on if you're the aviators no I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what they are not going to be home week 11 no they'll, they will be in the playoffs they'll, somewhere. They'll, this is a good they'll take this team. they'll learn a lot from this and they'll get ready for that ebc schedule and they'll be ready to roll they're going to take a trip to niles mckinley next week Lake's going to be at home taking on Maple Heights. A couple special shout-outs before we get out of here on the Simon Says Promotions postgame show. All of our friends over there at Simon Says Promotions, Spirit of Stark, Brits Bows, Game Day Boutique, Studio Vibes, Copeland Paints, Tiger Store. A lot going on over there at the Checkered Flag Building and inside of 409 Erie Street North and over at 59 Lincoln Way East. It's booming. All right, our friends at Kishman's Fresh Market, make sure to check them out down in Minerva and new location in Malvern. They're getting it done down there. We love our friends down at Kishman. Shout out to my boy, Matt Kishman, legendary lineman for the Minerva Lions. Our title sponsor couldn't do it without our friends at CH Vallis and Associates. Make sure to check in on them at 1302 South Main Street, North Canton. They've been there over 75 years for your home, auto, life insurance needs. Contact them at 494-2776. And when you need that tree cut down, you hear those engines blowing outside there right now. Contact Tom McNeil. McNeil and Sons Tree Service. 330-606-1125. They're up there at the Portage Lakes. They love coming down to Canton. They love cutting trees down in Stark County. Let those boys do what they do best. Couldn't do it without our friends over at Leathernecks Motorcycle Club. And finally, it's finally here, partner. We talk about it all year long. Six, seven months we wait after uh, Christmas time, waiting for football season to finally be here. And finally here, Hearing Aid Center, our friends over there sponsoring our player of the game. Check in with them at finallyhereohio.com. Get that free hearing aid test. Get your evaluation. Go over there and check them out at 1201 30th Street, Northwest in Canton, or call them at 492-1212. Tell Chris McCready's his boy TJ Downing sent him. Tell him Jim Ballard sent him. He trains his son. 
Come on now, Jackson Polar Bears and Jay Roar getting it done tonight. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us here on the Simon Says Promotions postgame show. I'm TJ Downing. For my partner, the College Football Hall of Famer, Jim Ballard, and Mark Milano down on the sidelines, we say so long from Alliance and Kara Stadium inside of Dom Capers Press Box. A final one more time. Lake Blue Streaks 41, Alliance Aviators 14. Will Butler, the transfer from Magador. He is your finally here Ohio.com player of the game for his efforts. And we will see you next week over in Plain Local where I'm going to be flapping them arms, man. Maybe they'll get me into the Glen Oak Hall of Fame one day. Maybe if I flap hard enough, we'll see what they can do with the Tigers next week as we check in Glen Oak, Maslin. That's been a battle in years past. Don't expect it to be anything less next Friday night right here on your home for the Stark Media Team, 99.7. And the iHeartRadio app. Streaming live all over the world. One more time for my partner Jim Ballard, Mark Milano. I'm TJ Downing. My guy back at the station, Kyle Molinelli. And my guy, Josh Nagy, getting it done. Appreciate you guys. More back now on 99.7 FM, Canton's New Country. At C.H. Vallis & Associates, we've been proudly serving the greater Stark County community for over 78 years. Locally owned, we cover your home, auto, business, and life insurance along with your group benefits. Our partnership with auto owners has allowed us to span not only Ohio, but throughout the entire country. Did you know that auto owners, an A++ rated company by AM Best and a Fortune 500 company, has ranked C.H. Vallis & Associates a top 10 insurance agency in the state of Ohio? From your basic home and auto needs to insuring some of the largest companies in America, there's a reason people choose C.H. Vallison Associates and Auto Owners. Our dedication and passion for our clients and their coverage